you recognize the name. Before these guys were Astros, they donned the red and blue of the Round Rock Express. Now, the next wave of Express looks to play their way to the next level because they know the road to the big show in Houston comes through Round Rock. For some, they are Express today and Astro tomorrow. A very pleasant and warm Memorial Day welcome from the Dell Diamond on the lip of the Texas Hill Country in beautiful Round Rock, Texas. I'm Mike Katz, voice of the Round Rock Express, joined by former Astros right-hander and manager Larry Durker alongside. Larry, two hours ago, looking over this ballpark, you never would have believed we'd have played Memorial Day baseball out here, but the grounds crew uh, has gone to work diligently. The sun's out. We got baseball. Yeah, it, it's beautiful right now. When I came in, I had an umbrella. It looks like now we need sunglasses, uh, and I hope this lasts for another three or four hours. We'll have a good time. We'll be styling in sunglasses, no doubt, on Memorial Day as the Memphis Redbirds are here against the Round Rock Express. Memphis and Round Rock have met seven times. Round Rock with the four games to three lead in the season series. Uh, this is the final game of this homestand as we get started here. A very historic day for Round Rock Express and Ryan Sanders baseball, Larry, uh, in eight seasons. Today will mark the five millionth fan that will come through the turnstiles here. That's just an, a, a remarkable oh, record for any minor league franchise. It's amazing. It's like 9,500 a game. And I can remember the Astrodome days and the bleak days of the mid-70s. We didn't draw that many people to the Astrodome. The other thing that's interesting about this is my cohort here, Larry Durker, has never really seen a minor league game. That's that's astounding. <laughs> but uh, you started with the Astros at age 17 or 18 in the major leagues, and your career went from there. Yeah, went to an instruction league, came to the big leagues, never went down. Uh, played a lot of exhibition games against minor league teams, minor league all-star teams. This is the first actual regular season minor league game I've ever seen in my life. Well, we'll uh, have Larry's minor league introduction, and we'll be back with the starting lineups and more pregame from Adele Diamond in just a moment. Larry Durker, it is such a wonderful Memorial Day here at the Dell Diamond. We're seeing the color guard leave the field. We've already seen the military presence. A young man, a captain from Fort Hood who just returned throughout the first pitch. Huge military presence today. There will be 17 young people inducted into the Marine Corps. And what a timely, timely day it is on this Memorial Day. That's Captain David Whitman from the 49th Cavalry Division who's just back from Iraq. Throws out the first pitch, sort of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, a baseball game certainly isn't, isn't as important as uh, the security of our country. But what we have here is a baseball game, and, and that's one of the things that's uh, a lot of fun about being in this country. And I plan to enjoy it. I don't know about you. You bet you I'm going to. Let's take a look at the Nolan Ryan's guaranteed tender beef weather. 73 degrees, calm winds, uh, clearing skies, a chance of rain showers, but I tell you, there's something about this Dell Diamond, Larry. Uh, <laughs> we talked about it on the pregame. You wouldn't have forecast we could have had a baseball game here, but the field drains so well. The grounds crew here is expert at what they do, uh, and the skies are lifting. I'm saying we're going to get nine innings in with well, no problem. You've been here the whole time. How many games have you had rained out? One this year only. We've had a couple uh, of suspended ball games, but that's remarkable uh, given how – how strange what is it, seven years yeah how strange weather patterns can be coming yeah. off the Gulf of Mexico Memphis batting order and the batting orders as always let's check this out the snow and water .com batting order for the Memphis Redbirds leading it off in left field skip Schumacher batting second the shortstop Mike McCoy hitting third the former pitcher the center fielder Rick Ankeel Nick Stavanoa the Houston native in right field batting fourth hitting fifth playing first base tag Bozade. So the sixth hitter, the second baseman, Rico Washington, batting seventh and playing third base, Travis Hansen. The catcher, Matt Pagnozzi, will bat eighth and batting ninth, the pitcher, Matt Ginner. And that's your batting order brought to you by snowandwater.com. Jared Gotro gets a start for the Round Rock Express. Six feet tall, 190 pounds, 27 years old from Lake Charles, Louisiana. He's three and two on the season, a 4.33 ERA. 
has worked 52 innings. Opponents hit him at 263. He gives up exactly a hit an inning, Larry. His out pitch is a slider, and it can be devastating. He can run his fastball, uh, sinking it to 92 miles an hour. He has a nice cut to his four seam and a pretty good sinker as well to go along with that slider, which, as we said, is his out pitch, and uh, we'll watch him work. Uh, he's very, very deliberate in his motion, and uh, the quicker he works, uh, the better he works. He'll be looking at Skip Schumacher to start it up. Uh, pitch is over strike one. We're underway. The Nolan Ryan defense is... Brought to you by, of course, Nolan Ryan's guaranteed Nolan Ryan Foundation defensively as the next pitch is on the way. Swung on and foul back. Brooks Conrad's at third for the E-Train. Cody Ransom at short. Chris Burke at second base and Mark Sacamano at first. Left to right in that Round Rock outfield. Eric Bruntlett, Josh Anderson, and Barry Wesson. Eric Munson behind the plate. Jared Gotro on the mound. Skip Schumacher at the plate facing Jared Gotro. The outfield around toward left a little bit. Here's the two-strike pitch. That's just inside ball one. Gotro nice and relaxed, Larry, as he's getting underway here. Yeah, he's got a nice, easy motion, but I bet he's getting impatient uh, about playing in Round Rock, nice as it is. This is his fourth season here. One-two pitch. That went a little bit upstairs. Gotro had a little bit of problem in his last start. Things came on wound, uh, giving up a six-run inning, and he, it cost him seven earned runs in the ball game. but the previous start to that was a win against these Memphis Redbirds in Memphis. Here's the two-two pitch on the way. That's hammered into right field. Back it goes. That ball is up on the berm, and it is gone. So a leadoff home run for Skip Schumacher opens the game. If there is a weakness in Jared Gotro's game, Larry, it has been the home runs. He's now given up nine in 52 innings of work. Yeah, that'll, that'll keep you uh, below the big league level, I guarantee you. And let's take a look at it. Gotro. Catcher sat up inside. He didn't quite get it in there. Got it but up. give the hitter some credit. That ball was probably high out of the strike zone, and he was still able to keep his top hand firm and, and hit it hard. Mike McCoy getting the start at shortstop. Looks at a pitch that misses high. Ball one. Gotro will be the first to tell you he's working on that, uh, on that delivery that gets him into some trouble. And the home runs start to fly. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That's up and in. Moves him backward. If you throw a sinker, you want to pitch around the knees most of the time. And when you do come upstairs with the fastball, you got to keep it in tight. That's a problem sometimes against left-handed hitters because it tends to fade back toward the strike zone. 2-0 pitch. And that's in too tight. A jackknife move by McCoy to get out of the way. It's interesting, too, when you watch Gotro. His body language so foretells what he has coming in out of the bullpen. I guess a lot of pitchers are that way, but Jared is very emotional that way. 3-0 pitch upstairs of walk after the home run and Gotro struggling here and out goes his catcher Munson to talk to him. And right now, what can what can Munson give in regard to advice here? Well, I you know, more than anything, if he knows the pitcher, he might be able to say something about his delivery. But uh, if he doesn't see something that he wants to specifically talk about, he can just say, let's stop for a moment here, take a deep breath and start over. Rick Ankeo, good story here for this young left-handed hitter. Former first-round draft pick as a pitcher. Swings and pops that one foul. Let's see if there will be a play on it. Brooks Conrad, the third baseman, comes over. But it'll sail into the seats behind the Round Rock dug dugout. League leaders, of course. Time to look at the Corpus Christi Convention and Visitors Bureau league leaders. Today we check the PCL standings. Iowa Cubs out in front in the American Northern Division. Followed by Nashville, Omaha, and Memphis. Albuquerque, a game ahead of Round Rock in the American Southern Division, followed by Zephyrs and Oklahoma Redhawks. 0-1 Anki, a high drive to right. This one's hooking foul. That ball is hit a mile and way down toward the picnic area. Hitters early, Larry, getting some good looks at these guys. Well, they're getting a good look at him now, but that doesn't necessarily uh, mean he's in big trouble. Sometimes the first inning can be difficult as you sort of get your bearings with what your pitches are and what's working and where the strike zone is for the umpire. Two strike pitch hit into left center field. This is trouble. Brunner will watch it bounce on the fence racing around and coming to the plate McCoy really throw not in time and it's two to nothing Memphis as Jared Gotro has given up a homer and an RBI double the homer to Schumacher the RBI double to Rick Ankeel. 
And we'll see it again. The fastball down, but he had a good part of the plate again. Anyway, you'll see invariably in every leg up through the major leagues is that the balls that get hit with power usually are on the plate. The pitches on the corner, sometimes you give up hits, but you usually don't give up the extra base hits. Nick Stavanoa, the Houston native, a 282 batter for the Memphis Redbirds. Gotro slider slapped it foul into the seats, first base side. Stavanoa, when we talk to scouts about him, brings about a lot of comparison to a young man now in the major leagues, Chris Duncan, except Duncan, a left handed batter. Body build wise and power potential wise. He's had a pretty good uh, season series against Round Rock. Yes, he has. The one strike pitch. That's lifted up in the air to right. Barry Wesson lining it up, makes the grab, and no move toward third by Rick Anke. A one gone now, and a two to nothing Memphis lead here at the Dell Diamond against the Round Rock Express and Jared Gotro. That's as a pitcher, if you scuffle for your first two or three hitters, it's a good thing to get that first out. Yeah, it's nice to get that, get that out. He, he threw that slider right on the outside corner at the knees, and uh, although you would expect to get a ground ball on that pitch, uh, at least he got it out, and he hit him on the end of the bat rather than the sweet spot, so the ball had no carry to it. It's all about control. Whatever level, no matter how hard you throw, it's all about control. First baseman Tag Bozade has been reactivated from the DL just at the beginning of this series. Looks at a strike from Gotro. At this point, with one out, with a guy that has a slow delivery like Gotro, the runner on second might think about trying to steal third. But I don't think Ankyo's got the kind of speed to try that. The one strike pitch lifted up in the air into short center field. Racing back goes the second baseman Burke. He's got it lined up to put it away for the second out. Well, maybe settle down there. The last couple of hitters, uh, he's made some good pitches and taken the sting out of their bats. Rico Washington has been the first baseman for the Memphis Redbirds throughout much of this season. He's playing second today and batting in the six hole for manager Chris Maloney's Memphis Redbirds. Two to nothing Memphis. Two outs here in the top half of the first inning from the Dell Diamond on Memorial Day. Gotro's first pitch a little bit low outside ball one. You know what I really have to ask myself Mike is uh, am I really watching a minor league game. I mean the minor leagues that I remember just from the guys I knew that came up through the minor leagues was like Bull Durham. <laughs> this is like a mini major league. Yes it is. Yes it is. One -oh pitch. Bounce down toward first. Nice play by Mark Sacamano. We'll take it to the bag himself. And that will end the first inning for the Memphis Redbirds. They score twice on two hits. And at the end of one half inning, Memphis two, Round Rock comes to the plate next. For the Round Rock Express, snowandwater.com. Batting order for the Round Rock Express looks like this. Leading it off at second base, Chris Burke. Batting second in left field, Eric Brontlett. The third hitter, Brooks Conrad, plays third base. Batting cleanup, the catcher, Eric Monson. Cody Ransom gets a start at shortstop. Will bat fifth. Hitting sixth, Mark Sacamano at first. Josh Anderson gets a start in center field. Will bat seventh. Hitting eighth in right field, Barry Wesson and Jared Gotro's on the mound. Matt Ginner, former major leaguer with the White Sox. And the Mets, as well as Detroit, will face... Chris Burke, who looks at a strike, get her one and four on the season. He's been used mostly out of the bullpen. This he is just has. his fifth start. He has. We've seen him two previous times out of the bullpen. Works from the stretch position as always. That's lined in the left field base hit for Burke. He gets it started for the Round Rock Express. Chris had been off to a little bit of a slow start, Larry, but uh, his attitude, one might say, well, Hasn't he been disappointed? Certainly he was disappointed to get sent back down, but he's gone to work and decided he's going to prove to himself and to the Astros and to Major League Baseball he's Major League ready. Well, I think he's a certainly Major League quality player. Uh, the situation with Craig Biggio chasing 3,000 hits uh, basically is the reason that Burke is here at Round Rock. Uh, they tried him in center. It didn't quite work out. He didn't hit quite as well as he had last year, and so here he is, but he's got to play well here to get back up. Another guy who's playing well here, Eric Bruntlett. Looks at a strike from Ginner on that outside edge. Let's take a look at the Nolan Ryan Foundation defense for the Memphis Redbirds. 
Okay, we'll do that in just a second. Brundlin has been on fire of late, hitting 400 over his last five, Larry, and he's played all positions for the express save catcher and pitcher. Been a very val valuable player for the Astros the last couple of years. Slider away, count to one and one. But Eric uh, is excellent Nolan, defensively. A look at the Nolan Ryan Foundation defense for the Memphis Redbirds. Hanson at third, McCoy at short. Rico Washington at second base, Tag Bozade at first. Skip Schumacher, Rick Ankeel, and Nick Stavanoa left to right in their outfield. Matt Pagnazzi behind the plate. Matt Ginner on the mound. Pagnazzi is a familiar name. He is indeed. That pitch downstairs, ball two. Pagnazzi, of course, is the nephew of former Cardinals catcher Tom Pagnazzi. It's a young man that uh, plays a couple of days a week and pinch hits with great regularity. Two to nothing Memphis. Chris Burke with the leadoff single. I'm surprised Eric doesn't have a home run yet. He's got a little bit of power. Outfield straight up as Ginner delivers. That's over for strike two. Ginner has a nice and relaxed, easy delivery. He's four and four as a major leaguer in six major league seasons with those three teams, the White Sox, Mets, and Detroit. It's another situation where there might be a stolen base, although I kind of doubt it with no outs. 2-2 two -two pitch. Spun it in low, ball three. You know, it's interesting, too, when you talk about Burke, you look at his stolen bases, four for five early, and, and uh, a guy that never has been, even in his double-A days here with the Round Rock Express, afraid to run. Really uses that as a big part of his game. Runner goes, payoff pitch, line drive right field. Round to third will go Burke. You can't draw up a hit and run any better than that. Round Rock has runners at the corners now. I'm not sure it's a hit and run, and that's uh, one of the things that you really never know unless the runner at first gets a terrible break. If the runner at first gets a decent break, he might be stealing, and the, and the hitter might see a pitch he can hit. Uh, either way, it worked out great for the Express. See, now that's a good jump. He was stealing, but he's looking, too. It might have been a hit and run. You, you just can't be sure. Well, he just sort of cruised into third base, too, because he did get such a great break. Yeah, some, some guys, uh, you know, are become obsessed with not getting picked off on the hit and run and they get a short lead and a, and a late jump. But I like to see a guy do it the way Burke did it. A move to third and then the first no throw. Brooks Conrad standing in. Conrad's in a little bit of a hitting slump right now at, at 219. Got some pop though, doesn't he? Yes, he does. His nine homers had 79 extra base hits, led all the minor leagues last year. That's on the corner. Strike one to Brooks. It's interesting too. When you talk about 79 extra base hits, had 15 triples. So that tells you he can run a little bit besides the pop. Well, it's really nice to have that at the top of the lineup, too. Now Burke and Brentlett both have some speed. Not sheer speed, but pretty good. Enter a look at third. Uh, that one down and in. And interesting, too, when, when Conrad gets into a, a real good hitting stride, Pitchers in the PCL simply can't handle it. He'll, he'll go. He's in a slump now. But he might start today and go for two and a half, three weeks where they just don't know how to handle him, can't handle him. They'll go home and did they get Burke? Yes, slides in safely. Hey, a little magic play. act. <laughs> how about that? Pagnazzi chased him all around that, around that area. I'll tell you what, that was a great play by the first baseman. The throw was a little bit off, and, and Burke was able to elude the tag. But a lot of times, to keep out of the big inning, you just try to get the second to first double play or, or step on first, second base double play, and let the run score. But and having a presence of mind to go home was, was a pretty good uh, thought. But the throw just wasn't quite good enough, and Burke was too tricky. Well, he certainly did a great job avoiding that tag, and catcher Eric Munson's up in, a, in an RBI spot. Two to one, Memphis now, as Burke scoring on the ground out by Brooks Conrad. Munson with six home runs on the season, looks at one low, and interestingly enough, Munson now has been relegated to everyday catching duty. He and Danny Ardois had been sharing it until Ardois come up, came up a couple of weeks ago with a leg injury, and he's rehabbing nicely and chomping at the bit ready to go. Well, Munson can hit. I, I believe he's a better hitter than uh, either of the catchers the Astros have right now. And 
the rap on him last year was the defensive uh, problems. And uh, a couple of times it, it looked pretty bad, but most of the time he was decent. Well, he certainly can hit. There's no doubt about it. We've seen him defensively. That's lined in the right field base hit. That'll tie the ball game. Brunton will score. Monson's chugging around. He's going to test the arm of the right fielder, and Monson slides in with his 17th double to tie the ball game at two. Excellent situational hitting by Eric Munson. Kind of caught it on the end of the bat, but kept it fair. He's in scoring position now, so the Round Rock didn't waste any time getting back in this game. Munson's got power, too. Hit some long home runs last year for the Astros. Well, and if you're on the right field berm here at the Dell Diamond and Eric Munson's up, you probably ought to have your baseball glove out. There's 18th double for Eric Munson, that was. Instead of 17, you were exactly right. And that'll bring Cody Ransom to the plate. Another RBI guy for the Round Rock Express. Hot as well. Five, uh, hitting at a 400 clip over his last five. But you got to look carefully at him, too. And I'm sure the Astros are, as, as well as the uh, Round Rock people. Because the, the Astros could use a shortstop that can hit. They've got one that's probably the best fielder in the National League, but uh, if you've got a shortstop that can hit, it's worth a lot. Agnazi has missed twice to Ransom. Ransom's league batting average at 269. Runners in scoring position, he ups it 100 points, and that's what you like to see, especially with a guy, Larry, who hits in the 4, 5, or 6 hole. Went for a little change up there. Interesting, too, Larry, Cody has been moved to third some. And while at first balked at it, realized that after about 10 games, he had turned basically into a magician, really, really adept at hand-eye coordination, very quick, great leaping abilities, made some great, great defensive plays at third for the, for the Express, but gets to start at shortstop today. So He's got eight stolen bases, so he must have some speed. He does. A tremendous acceleration. A former backup middle infielder for the San Francisco Giants in 2004. And a guy who is, is a baseball park rat, and I mean that in the most sincere complimentary uh, equation. I'll mention that to him. Because I do. He said I, he was a rat. I tell it to him, <laughs> I tell <laughs> it to him all the time. <laughs> yeah, we're all down there together. We must all be that way. Well, the go-ahead run in scoring position for the Express. Uh, Cody goes down swinging on a high fastball tight. That is the second out of the inning. It brings up Mark Sacamano, the first strikeout for Ginner. 2-2 ball game now. A home run and an RBI double in the first for the Redbirds. Back-to-back -back singles, an RBI ground out, and an RBI double by Munson has tied it for the Express against the Memphis Redbirds here in the bottom of the first inning. Mark Sacamano, the right-handed hitting first baseman for Route Rock. Former Baylor All-Star. Uh, looks at an off-speed pitch. Started him out with that one right down the heart of the plate for a strike. Mark had an interesting 2006, Larry. Started on the DL the first two months of the season and came back with the Corpus Christi Hooks to have a 20-homer campaign, which was uh, that one's high and tight. Pretty well, it's a tremendous achievement, really. Oh, yeah, think it really is. The double A level. Sacamano hitting an even 300 opening play today. Has seven home runs for Round Rock. Ginner's pitch up and in, and Pagnotti's going to go out and have a little chat with him. And again, not to start Ginner wanted to give up a couple of runs in the first inning after his teammates had staked him to a two to nothing lead. But the first inning uh, historically is the highest scoring inning in baseball. If you go back to 1900 and come forward and total up all the runs in all the innings. And I think it's because the starters, they don't have the relief pitcher mentality. They kind of ease their way into the game. Sometimes they're not completely ready. Well, again, he misses high. Sometimes you get out there and the wind's blowing a 
a different direction than it was in the bullpen and your pitchers are moving just a little bit differently. Uh, I don't think that's a factor today. Sometimes the mound might be a little steeper or a little flatter in the bullpen than it is on the field. Lost him, uh, put two aboard with two outs in this inning. First walk given up by Ginner. You think he knows enough to have been pitching around him? May. Uh, that may well be the case as the pitching coach, Dyer Miller, out to talk to both Pagnazzi and to Matt Ginner. The Anderson, who is coming up, is uh, the speed guy on this team. Obviously, plays center field. He's got 15 bases and stolen bases and 16 tries. What I see is he doesn't get on base that much, or otherwise he'd be at the top of the lineup. But he does have 20 RBIs, so he's he's not totally worthless in this situation. He what the other thing he does that really is disruptive. He has 15 steals, as you said, the speed guy. But we've actually seen him turn games around and distracting to pitchers to the point where he becomes even a bigger factor than he is. That's what you want from the speed guys is make everybody hurry, make everybody nervous. Uh, speed can help you in a lot of ways on the bases, on defense. In fact, Mike, I would say that uh, when I look at the Astros this year, that is their most glaring weakness in my eyes is that they don't really have anybody that can put pressure on the opposing pitcher and they uh, don't have anyone other than Hunter Pence that's going to cover a lot of ground in the outfield. Anderson, very calm and deliberate at the plate. A one ball, one strike count. Anderson hitting at 270. Only has that one home run. Hit it over the center field wall in Des Moines Principal Park into a breeze in mid-April. And it was chilly as well as you might imagine in Des Moines. That's yeah. usually the last thing you want to have happen is your speed guy hit a long home run and then become enamored with power and start over swinging. Well, his hitting coach, Ron Jackson, the former Angel, the former Minnesota Twins outfielder, has made sure that he kept him out of that, out of that mode. Lined up the middle. Let's see if Munson can score. He will, and Anderson comes through with the RBI single. And that ups it to three to two round rock again a nice job Anderson taking just exactly what Ginner offered him and comes away with his 21st RBI on the season. I'm not sure they could have gotten it out even if the second baseman had fielded this ball may have been able to get one a second but I doubt it definitely couldn't have thrown him out at first. Of course he could have kept the ball in the infield and kept the run from scoring but luckily for round rock he got through and now they've got the lead. Barry Wesson, the right fielder, comes to the plate with runners at the corners. Sacamano hustling his way from first to third on that base hit up the middle. And that's one of the things that Danny Schaefer, the third base coach, and veteran manager Jackie Moore, now in his 50th year in baseball, insist upon as guys who can go from first to third. 50th and do. year? Yes. He's been in it longer than you have. That's about <laughs> I'm a puppy compared to that. <laughs> so are you. Wesson. Takes a strike on the outside edge. Barry and Tim Raines Jr. have very difficult jobs for the Express as backup outfielders. Called upon to spot start from time to time, and especially when the Express plays National League clubs, part of double switches throughout ball games, and you just have to remain ready to go at all times in that situation. That's belted up in the air to center field. This has possibilities. Back goes Ankeel. And he'll track it down on the warning track for the out. That's a nice running grab by Rick Ankeel. And that ends the first. Round Rock scores three times on four hits. Three to two, Round Rock. Wow, what a great day for baseball. Memorial Day, and we say a special hello to veterans out there. There are plenty in the stands here, Larry, and uh, we talk about it a couple of times during this game, but, boy, some folks are going to get suntans here, uh, and they brought rain gear to the ballpark. I think that's uh, quite ironic on this Memorial Day, but it's going to turn out to be a great day for baseball, as it always seems to be. The U.S. Army, of course, on the party deck, and uh, we saw... Uh, Captain Dave Whitman throw out the first pitch from the 49th Cavalry Division. Just a wonderful, wonderful day and a wonderful way to celebrate for 
yeah. all you veterans out there. And look at the ballpark. I mean, it, it looks like a miniature major league park, and it looks like a nicer park than about four or five that I played in when I first came up, like Crosley Field and Forbes Field, a sportsman's park. I mean, this place is a gem. And we're all proud of it here at Round Rock as Travis Hansen, the third baseman, stands in to start out the second inning. Three to two, Round Rock. Express getting excellent. Timely hitting on Eric Munson double, an RBI on a ground out, an RBI single by the center fielder Anderson. A nice pitch, swung on and missed. Hansen 194. This is a defensive whiz, Hansen. And the Cardinals people tell us that if he can solve Pacific Coast League pitching and put up any kind of numbers, he's got a chance to play in St. Louis. Show some occasional pop, does Hansen. Has a couple of homers. One of those has come against Round Rock this season, has two dogs, 280 batting average against Round Rock, and only 194 against the league. So he's had he's had some success against E Train pitching. You know, Mike, it's it it's seldom that you find a player that has all the tools. The great fielders usually have trouble hitting. The guys that get on base a lot are usually slow. The guys that can run real fast usually don't get on base enough. It, it's hard to find the guy that's got the whole package. It really is. And there about gives birth to the art of managing, doesn't it? It does, but you can't manage your way out of a lack of ability. <laughs> Again, <laughs> believe me, now. all you can do is just <laughs> put the lineup up there and, and call the plays like swing 3-2 or run 3-2 or, uh, you know, whatever, hit and run, bunt. But the players have to perform, and if they don't, you're not a very good manager. That's it. And they read about you in the paper a lot that way, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Strike three is Gotro. Got that slider downstairs. Hanson couldn't hang back. That's the first strikeout on the afternoon for the Lake Charles, Louisiana right-hander. And they're on is. top of it a little bit, too, and, and it had a little bit more bite, a little more downward movement than some of the other sliders. That one looked a little bit more like the Jared Gotro we had seen in previous starts. Gaining confidence as he goes. Has retired his last four, and Matt Pagnazzi, the catcher, right-handed batter, stands in. Gotro hooks that slider over for a strike. Had reconstructive surgery on an elbow a couple of years back, and we're talking about Gotro, and just has come into a situation where he has complete confidence in that elbow now. That one's lined into right field. Wesson drifts over to make the grab. Larry, this ball club, Round Rock, over the last three, four years, has been blessed with tremendous speed in the outfield. We're talking about the Willie Tavares of the world, Mike Rodriguez, who has been injured and will be back uh, within the next couple of weeks, also a natural center fielder. We started this season basically with four legitimate center fielders in the outfield. You can't beat that for a defensive club, as Matt Ginner, the pitcher, stands in. Gotro again hits that outside edge. Three to two, Round Rock leading Memphis with two outs here in the top of the second inning from the Dell Diamond on Memorial Day. And two quick strikes. Gotro now, Larry, seems to have gained a little momentum as he's well, starting to hit some good spots. Of course, it's the second inning. You know, he's probably thrown 25 pitches now, and he's starting to settle in. Gunner does not have a base hit on the season. It's worked, as Larry said earlier, mostly out of the bullpen. Takes that one out of the park. In foul ground up the first base side. We're going to end up having a dandy crowd here. Somewhere upwards of 11,000, and it will take Round Rock over the 5 million mark in total attendance, which is just unbelievable through seven-plus seasons. And it started right off with a, uh, just one of those fairy tale type stories of winning everything the very first year in a brand-new ballpark uh, in a city that hadn't had minor league baseball. Well, they definitely got off on the right foot, and they've been going pretty steadily ever since then. Next pitch, bounce right back to Gotro. We'll get him out of the inning. The first one, two, three inning recorded by either pitcher. We go to the bottom of the second round, Rock leading three to two.
Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. Mike Caps and Larry Durker. The score, Round Rock leading. The Memphis Redbirds 3-2. Our first online auction item for 2007, a 2007 Round Rock Express autographed batting helmet. It's signed, ironically enough, by Hunter Pence the day before he left for the Houston Astros. And to find out more about it, go to rrexpress.com or cchooks.com, and we'll have some more item items to auction as we go along. Three, in fact. And that's you the talk first about one. Hunter Pence and uh, everything he's done for the Astros since coming up. He's, the team isn't playing that well, but he's really generated a lot of fan interest and a lot of excitement with his speed and power. And the Astros have had pretty good luck uh, in their system, bringing guys up to the big leagues and keeping them there over the last decade or so. Round Rock sent eight hitters to the plate in that first inning, and three of those scored. Jared Gotro, the beneficiary of that, uh, is starting it out. So hitters nine, one, and two up here in the second inning. Round Rock leading three to two. Ginner's next pitch there for a strike. Even you know, so a lot of these pitchers look like good hitters before they swing. That's it. See that? See how good he looks? Oh, he looks, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> but. Gautreaux will be the first to tell you he's not, but uh, you can get in a discussion with either one of the bullpens, and they have some potential Babe Ruths to hear them tell it. That one it takes some batting practice and hit home runs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> I ended up hitting 131. Yeah. <laughs> Gotro leading off this second inning, hits a high pop-up down the left field side. Mike McCoy, the left fielder, over near the foul line, puts it away for the out. Well, he got pretty good distance yeah, on that Not too one. bad. He got around on an inside pitch. So Chris Burke will step in to with one out in this inning, singled and scored. One of the three round rock runs in the first. And I haven't talked to the Astros uh, brass recently, but I would imagine that they still think that Chris Burke is the second baseman of their future. Uh, even though they have Mark Loretta this year who can also play second. But Mark's a little older, and he's just got a one-year deal. Burke so looks at a strike. If you're looking to find a guy to tie down a position for a number of years, second base is probably Burke, and he probably knows that too. Ginner's next pitch off the outside. In a way, he can't do anything down here except mess up. Because if he plays well here, he'll probably be at second next year. If he doesn't play well here, then they're going to be wondering, well, is he really the guy we want? And he looks at strike two. There's never any real let up once a kid makes the major leagues and he gets on on the elevator back and forth, is there? I mean, the no. pressure is constantly there. And some of it depends on the team. Because uh, you can be up in the big leagues as a young guy and not playing all the time. But if the team's winning and you're in first place, you're probably going to stay put. But if you're on a team that's losing, they're going to be looking to change something. Burke hammers that one up in the air to left center field. McCoy races back and Keel, the center fielder, comes over. And they almost collide. But let's see who came up with that baseball. It. It's Ann Keel who got it for the out. Two gone here in the second inning. Now here's a situation out there in their outfield. And Keel plays some center field, mostly in right. McCoy is a spot player both on the infield and outfield, so not a lot of communication there, and it almost costs a You know what would be, will be interesting if we see it uh, in this game is if An Keel has a chance to make a play with a throw because the reason he left the mound was that he had very poor control. Eric Brontlett singled his first time, looks at a strike. Well, the other night in here playing center field. Round Rock had a couple of runners aboard, and Ankeel was called upon to try to nail one at the plate, threw it halfway up on the screen back here. Plenty of arm strength, but way out of control. Half-hearted swing and a miss by Brontlett there, fooled by that pitch. Eric doesn't get fooled by much. But, you know, sometimes uh, a player will throw better in the heat of action than he will if he's got time. Uh, there have been catchers that have had trouble throwing the ball back to the pitcher. Right. But could still make the throw to second base on a steal. Isn't that something, how that works? Yep, it's all between your ears. <laughs> Two outs in the second inning as that pitch misses way up. Bruntlett 
steadily moving his batting average toward the 280s and the RBI totals grow as the season grows for Eric he's been so consistent over the last 10 days that's on the outside edge for a strike that's the second Ginner strikeout and it ends the second inning no runs no hits in this inning round rock leading three to two as we go to the third Welcome back to the Dell Diamond, a 3-2 to two Round Rock lead into the top half of the third inning. Fans, you ever wonder what the players talk about while they're warming up before the game? Let's listen in to Jesse Garcia and Cody Ransom in our IBC Bank Sounds of the Game. Orv yesterday, during stretch, he comes in and, you know, hey, what's up, Jess? Hey, what's up? And I was like, hey, how's it going? I said, hey, by the way, do you even know my name? And he was like, uh, 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 no, 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 I'm sorry. I said, then why you act like you know me? You don't, how, how you doing? doing? How you doing? Hey, you don't even know my name. You even acting like you know, you know who I am. I said, don't worry about it. Papa Jack's been all season, and he's still calling me Cookie. He's calling me Cookie to this day. Oh, well, brother, we got a controversial play here. Yes, sir. That ball was lined down the left field side. Bruntlett snatched it off the grass top, and there's no argument about it. He did make that grab, but boy, that was tight. Uh, Brunt, he, let's see it again. He it. Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, he got it. He got it right, right off the grass top. We've seen Bruntlett do that. Let's take one more. Yeah, that's a great angle there, and you could see that he had it right about his knee. What a play by Bruntlett. Man, he's really a gifted fielder. He is. Mike McCoy looks at a strike from Jared Gotro. Gotro now has retired six straight after giving up. The RBI double to Ankeel back in the first. Three to two round rock. One gone here in the top half of the third. Mike McCoy, the hitter. That one on the outside edge. Gotro owning that outside corner, Larry. If you own that, uh, you won't stay here long. And that's really what uh, has been Leo Mazzoni's theory that's worked so well for the Braves for about 15 years. Low and away. Everything low and away. Just pound it low and away. You give up some hits, but you don't give up many home runs, and you don't give up many doubles or triples either. It's a good way to keep the score down. Just can't get that bat on the ball, can you? I mean, well, they can, but they can't really drive the ball. Right. And it's hard to pull the ball. You can pull a ball that's up and away. You can hit a ball that's up and away over the right center field fence, but it's hard to hit a home run on a pitch that's down and away. And Gotro continues to pound that outside, and... McCoy fouls that one back. Those comments and uh, pregame warm up on the IBC bank sounds of the game from yesterday, of course. Gotro working a 2 2 and that foul back. It's interesting, too. Uh, Jesse and Cody both have major league time and both get out and do a lot in the Round Rock community. And, and that was just an interesting little exchange they had there. Great camera work where those guys mic'd up like they were. McCoy in, at a 269 average, part time player. And you know, if you have to play in the minor leagues after you've already played in the major leagues, it's sort of a letdown. But if there was anywhere you could go that would uh, maybe lessen that a bit, it would be Round Rock, Austin, all the things there are to do around here. Uh, I would imagine it's about the best. That the minor leagues has to offer. Well, it's interesting to talk to guys about that. Uh, Joe McEwing played here last year. You know, had some significant mm -hmm. major league time with the Mets and with the Cardinals. And we've had lots of others who said exactly the same thing. The way they're treated here by fans, the fans are so knowledgeable. McCoy with a good at bat here continues to foul off Gotro's pitches. Gotro's working him very, very hard, but so far has not been able to put him away. Round Rock with a three to two lead here in the third inning. Cody Ransom gets a test at short, the easy throw. That is Cody's favorite position shortstop. But I'm telling you, Larry, he has turned in some outstanding, outstanding work. Yeah, this is a pretty player. easy play, but he made a good decision 
to come in for it and take the short hop instead of staying back for the big hop. That made the throw a lot easier. And he didn't get caught between hops. So kind of a routine play, but he made it well. Rick Ankiel has driven in one of the two Memphis runs with a booming double his first time. Has 35 RBIs on the season now. Looked at one a little bit wide. Ball one. That one's ripped up into the concourse area, first base side. Had a chance to watch very extensively. And he'll take batting practice in Memphis last week. And if you watch his hands through the zone, they are tremendously quick. He's pulled two balls well foul already in this game. One would have been a home run, that last one a line drive. If you're a pitcher and you see a guy that's pulling the trigger that quickly, you go to your off-speed stuff. Gotro upset at himself. You could see him skip a little a little bit as he delivered that pitch. Knew it was not good. But a not good pitch out of the strike zone is better than a not good pitch down the middle to a power hitter. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. That one's lifted up in the air to right center. Wesson's chugging back. Yeah, ballpark's not going to hold it. And there's the evidence. Yes. A pitch that was not where you wanted it that was right down the middle. And Keel's 10th home run with two outs in this third inning ties the ball game at three. And the second home run Gotro has given up in the ball game. The 10th he's given up on the season. Well, you couldn't have placed it on the crosshairs of the strike zone any better. And Keel, watch and see what happens with him, Larry, if the Cardinals start to falter from the 4th of July on. I'll bet you he'll be in the major leagues getting his baptismal there. Stavanoa swings and lines it in the left field for a base hit. So well, they're two, already faltering. So some two out offensive thunder for the Redbirds here in this third. Tag Bozade popped out to second base his first time. Memphis has tied it with Ankiel's home run. Bozade's an interesting story. He lost a season of baseball in the AAA level a few years back. Was jumping up and down at home plate celebrating a home run and twisted a knee to the point where it needed surgery. <laughs> lost a whole year. Boy, this guy's a good professional hitter. Takes a great approach. Watches that one. Sail downstairs. Each team with four hits apiece. And tied at three here in this third inning. They still have Tim McCarver Field in Memphis? They may have it. They don't use it. The, okay. the Memphis Redbirds play downtown, a part of a $100 million refurbishing yeah. project. I Auto was Zone at, I was at Tim McCarver Field for a double A All Star game about 15 years ago, and it needed replacing. Ground ball force will end the third. Memphis ties it on Ankiel's home run. We go to the bottom of the third. Memphis three, Round Rock three. Welcome back to the Dell Diamond 3 3 ball game. Rick Ankeels home run into the right center field bullpen has tied it. Sidearm right hander Hugo Castellanos comes on to pitch for the Memphis Redbirds in relief of Matt Ginner. Castellanos, we have seen before with the Round Rock Express. He has made more than one appearance against Round Rock. In fact, has made two. No record of 3.86 ERA against Round Rock. And overall has no record in nine PCL appearances and a 3.38 ERA. Memphis has, Larry, about four pitchers who throw either submarine or deep sidearm. And uh, all right-handers and all work it well. They're very, very tough, as you well know, on right-handed hitters. Yeah, they are, and that's one of the things a, a young minor league player has to get used to. I suppose some of the veteran guys have seen it a lot, but... Uh, it's a different angle, and even if you don't throw real hard, if you have a little bit of movement and the ball starts off from underneath instead of on top, it gives a lot of hitters problems. 
Brooks Conrad drove in a run on a ground out back in the first inning. 3-3 ball game now, courtesy of Ank Eels. Two out home run into that bullpen for the Memphis Redbirds. Brooks Conrad trying to break out of a hitting slump here, hitting at 217. That's line, a diving grab by Washington, the second baseman, throws to first and got him. Outstanding defense by Rico Washington that time. Got a great break to his left and brought it in for the out. Conrad just missed a base hit. Yeah, he stuck that ball. That was a really nice play. Great range to his left, a great dive, and up to get Conrad, huh? Very nicely done. Eric Munson. And out on the outfield grass, the way they have positioned their infield, that pitch is there for a strike. Look at Washington, Larry, two or three steps back on the outfield grass. I don't think they uh, are worried that he will bunt. <laughs> Look where the third baseman is. That one shoots inside. We've seen a more pronounced shift. Iowa had one for Munson that had the second baseman basically playing rover in right center field. The shortstop coming around and playing basically second base with the third baseman playing shortstop. Monson slaps that one into the seats, third base side foul. Monson got an RBI double in the first inning. Round Rock scoring its three runs off of Matt Ginner in that first inning. Ginner got him one, two, three in the second. It makes me wonder if he, there's something wrong with him. That one cut on and missed, strike three. So Castellanos, with that 72-mile-an-hour floating pitch, Frisbee-type slider. Well, he gave him a different angle again, though. He got up on top of that breaking ball because he didn't want it to be flat. You know, his release point was a little bit different than what it was on his fastball. Cody Ransom struck out his first time. Gunner got him back in that first inning. Ransom had gotten himself into a streak, Larry, earlier in the month. Over 12 games where he was homering every third day. That's a good kind of streak to <laughs> it, have. It was. He, said, he told me yesterday, he said, I, that was my third day and I missed out. What's amazing is when you look at some of the major league home run records that have been broken recently, guys are homering more than every third game. Almost every other game. Two strikes on Ransom, two outs in the bottom of the third and a 3-3 tie here at the Dell Diamond. That one missing way upstairs. Ransom, as a high school basketball player, could actually stand flat-footed and dunk behind him. That kind of spring in those legs. Got a couple of scouts here from the Spurs checking him out. <laughs> that one ripped into the seats beyond the Round Rock dugout. Boy, what was rain here this morning has turned into bright sunshine and very humid temperatures here in Central Texas. Oh, swung at a curveball off the outside. Two strikeouts for Castellanos in a 1-2-3 inning. We go to the fourth. Round Rock and Memphis tied at three. Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. We're tied at three. We're joined in the booth by Ryan Sanders, baseball president and CEO Reed Ryan. Hey. Well, you're having a great day. It was a little uh, a little dicey to get started, but uh, I know you're rain. here uh, and uh, really proud of your sponsorship and partnership with Sitco. Yeah, we really are, Mike. We're glad to get the game in. A lot of rain today, but uh, really this is a great day to kick off the Sitco uh, Ryan Sanders game of the week. And we wanted to thank the folks at Sitco. You Obviously, bet. they have a big presence. Uh, corporate headquarters in Houston, uh, big facility in Corpus Christi. Uh, care a lot about the Astros in the Austin area, so it's a great way for us to get these games on the air and let all the Astro fans around the Southwest uh, see these top prospects. And what a great day to start at Memorial Day with all the military implications, and I know Sitgo is big behind the military as well. Rico Washington has turned in one of the fine defensive plays this afternoon. Pops that one up to start out the fourth inning. 
The shortstop Cody Ransom with the sunglasses down will put it away for out number one. Hey, one pitch, one out. I'm good luck up here. <laughs> but no, Mike, getting back to Sitco, uh, you know, they came to us and said, hey, we really want to do something to help promote uh, Ryan Sanders baseball in Texas. Uh, you know, they have had the longstanding partnership with the Hall of Fame and with uh, the Boston Red Sox with the sign there. And so uh, this is a great way for all these Astro fans to, you know, get to see their players that are going to be coming up up the ranks. Gotro struck out Travis Hansen his first time. Hansen flies one out toward left. Bruntlett moves over easily for out number two. All right, two pitches, two outs, Dirk. Not bad. You You're doing that? better than I was doing. <laughs> Did you ever have an inning where you got uh, three pitches and uh, ended the inning? I doubt it because usually the guy won't swing at the third pitch. <laughs> Four, four is not uncommon. If you get one strike, they don't want to get two strikes. Sure. So you're saying whatever happens here, he's not going to swing at this pitch more than likely. More than likely. Matt Pagnozzi, the catcher, did not swing <laughs> at that pitch. Thank you, Larry Durker. You've seen a few games, huh? Yeah, what's great is when you get in the late stages of a game and they're taking the first pitch and you know it, you got strike one on everyone if you have good control. That one fouled back and count to one and one. We're having a great time on Memorial Day. It's turned out bright and sunshiny here at the Dell Diamond in beautiful Round Rock, Texas, on the lip of the Texas Hill Country. A lot of rain this morning. I was oh. worried about us getting this game in earlier. It's hard to believe we're at the same place. That one fouled back. It's interesting. Jay Miller, the uh, president, president of, the of the Express, is so so vehement about not about losing games doesn't want to do it and uh, we've only had one rain out as we said in seven years and as a result that's rolled out towards short quick one two three inning for go nice. Oh, nice going no Reed. Runs, no yeah. hits. <laughs> very good Reed. appreciate you coming by well, let's sit go i'm gonna get out of here we have a lot more games this season corpus and in round rock astro fans get ready hey, this is gonna be a regular all right three three into the bottom of the fourth Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. Mike Caps, Larry Durker alongside. We've got some fans in the stands there. Those are long time Round Rock Express season ticket holders. Seated behind home plate in a 3 3 ball game here at the Dell Diamond. Sure glad you're with us. Larry, looking at the schedule, we've got a nice Express and Corpus Christi hook schedule coming up. Yeah, we do. We've got uh, Express games on June 11th and June, uh, July 8th. It will be televised here. And uh, then the Hooks games will be the 21st and the 24th of June. And uh, the Texas League All-Star game will be on the 27th. I think we've got a game on July 15th, too. So we've got yeah. seven games all together. Yes, sir. That's a good schedule. Mark Sacamano starts it out. Hugo Castellano struck out two hitters in a 1-2-3 third for the Memphis Redbirds. Sacamano, his first time, walked and remained at third base. Round Rock scoring its three in the first. Two for the Redbirds in the first. That one popped up out toward third. Let's see if Hanson will have room. He's in foul ground, and he'll put the squeeze on it for out number one. So four straight retired by the right-hander, Hugo Castellanos. And that'll bring up Josh Anderson, who drove in the third run for the Express in the first with a base hit single. A lot of eyes in the Astros organization on Josh Anderson and his progress at the AAA level. Had 50 steals the year before last at Corpus, 43 last year, and is out to a great start. Has 15 steals and 16 tries. He's the third leading base thief in the PCO. Chopper down towards second. And two quick outs. Castellanos, Larry, with that sidearm to underhand delivery, very effective here through five hitters is Barry Wesson he steps in with two outs. But he's, he's been able to get the ground balls on the pitches that he gets down where he wants them, and he's been lucky on the pitches he's left up because they've popped them up. But those are the pitches you've got a better chance to drive. And what you really, as a hitter, try to force yourself to do is not swing at low pitches against a guy like this and force him to get the ball up. They play Barry straight away in the outfield. He has two homers, but... As he looks at that pitch, it misses. Yeah, that was a good one to hit. It was right down the middle, but he called it a ball. There's a nice replay of that wind up. He almost drags his knuckles across it's that mound. Kind of a combination so between pitching and bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he learned that from the PBA, you think? <laughs> yeah. 
literally in, in one of his warm-ups watching him in Memphis last week he, he did drag his hand on the mound. Ouch. Yes. Hanson's got to wait on that one. Blesson can run, but Hanson gets him in one, two, three. Two straight innings. Round Rock goes in order. Into the fifth inning. We're still tied at three. Memphis and Round Rock. Bright, sunshiny skies here at the Dell Diamond. We welcome you back to Round Rock, Texas. Mike Camps and Larry Durker alongside. We're tied at three. Each team with four hits. As the Memphis Redbirds trailing in the third with two outs until Rick Ankeel unleashed his 10th home run into the right center field bullpen to tie it. Jared Gotro, the other story, has given up two home runs, has given up 10 on the season. But since then, has settled in quite nicely, has retired uh, the last four he's faced. And so working... Uh, in a tie ball game into the middle innings here. Top half of the fifth is Castellanos will bat for himself. Well, a nice scene out there on the berm. You've got people with the blankets laid out and picnic baskets and what you might expect to do on Memorial Day, but not at a ballpark. They get both. We'll have the skipper Jackie Moore coming up in just a moment as Castellanos swings and misses at the first pitch. Jackie Moore down to the Round Rock dugout. IBC sounds of the game. Jackie Moore, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Great, great. Uh, Gotro giving up a couple of home runs, but has settled in nicely here. He has settled in. Big thing, we came back uh, bottom of the first inning and scored some runs, so we had quite a ball game going. No doubt about it, and uh, it's he's one of these kind of guys, Jackie. You and I have talked about this on radio for years. When he gets settled into a groove, he's hard to deal with. We've watched this a lot, Mike, and uh, we've become to expect it, so uh, hopefully he'll continue where he's taking him right now. So. And one more quick question for you here. Um, Burke doing a great job. We just saw a great defensive play, and I know you're really enthused about what you see from Chris. Well, he's doing an outstanding job, and I know that uh, his mission here is to get back to the big leagues, and uh, he's well on his way, so he's playing very well for us. Appreciate it. Get back to the game. Jackie Moore, the Round Rock Skipper, brought to you by IBC Banks of Sound, the sounds of the game. Do appreciate Jackie Moore, long time. Oh, the oh only what manager, a great guy. The I only mean, manager Rattlers ever a, had. A, a, an ideal manager to play for. Everybody you talk to says the same thing. Skip Schumacher has a 2-0 count. He's got a home run and his fly to left. Well, the last time the Astros changed managers, I thought they really might consider Jackie. And if they didn't, I think they probably should have. That one foul straight back, count to two and one. Well, you know, he's been a manager in the major leagues with the Oakland A's. He talks so um, so passionately about his days with uh, Lou Pinella as the bench coach in Cincinnati in that 1990 World's Champion Ball Club and then working with Donnie Baylor out with the Colorado Rockies. Three balls in one strike to skip Schumacher. But guys like that in his 50th year, Larry, in baseball, it's, it's not an oversimplification. As that pitch misses, ball four. That's the first walk issued by Gotro. It's not an oversimplification to say guys like Jackie Moore really are, are the engine that drives this game. I firmly yeah, believe that. That, that engine's been running for a long time. Yes. But you don't wear out your welcome that way. You know, Billy Martin was probably one of the best tactical managers of all time. But he couldn't hold a job for three or four years because by that time everybody hated him. Mike McCoy looks at the strike. They did. and That won't happen to Jackie Moore. And ironically, Jackie and, and Billy Martin were the best of friends throughout their days in Oakland and other places. They play Mike McCoy straight away. Bon attempt right back to the pitcher. Sacrifice bunt will work as Gocho no, doesn't get it back. Took too much time. It might have been a missed call, but it was a close play, and it didn't have to be. One of the it'll be an infield single. And Gotro, his own worst enemy there, I think. We're going to get a chance to see it again, Larry, and I want you to comment on it. Yeah, well, you know, it's nice to be poised, but sometimes you can take too much time. And I think that might have been a missed call, but as I said, it shouldn't have been that close. So Rick Ankeel who has a homer and an RBI double standing in with two aboard and one out in a 3-3 tie. You know, one thing that you have to do to become a good pitcher is to pitch through errors that your teammates make. 
sometimes that can uh, get you get your emotions up and affect your pitching. But when you make the error yourself, it might be even harder to overcome mentally. High drive into right center field again. Wesson's going to watch that one sail out of here. That's up and over the bullpen. A three run blast has upped it to six to three and Gotro has given up three home runs and you could see visibly. When he threw that pitch Gotro knew it was gone. Yeah. And so did Wesson he didn't even move he just turned around to see where it was going to land. So. The home run. Has been. No one will ever know if. if uh, the pitch was due to the play on the bunt but it was the very next pitch it really was a letter high fastball and Ankeel sitting dead red got it and wrote it out of here nobody Three home it. runs in this game now and 11 on the year already yep one and oh to Stavanoa who's one for two on the afternoon and he gave up two of the home runs and a double to a pitcher <laughs> He's playing center field That's right. <laughs> <laughs> sort of makes a man who made his living with about 150 major league wins like you quietly proud for pitchers doesn't it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know the guys like that would embarrass the rest of the pitchers the pitchers that could run fast were frowned upon because you try to keep up with them when you're running in the outfield and the guys that could hit were uh, few and far between too. That'll get activity working in the Round Rock bullpen as right hander Travis Driscoll gets up to throw. Six to three Memphis now. Rick and Keel, a one man wrecking crew, has driven in five of the six runs. And that is Travis Driscoll throwing down in that Round Rock bullpen. Former major leaguer with the Astros and Rockies, Baltimore Orioles, has pitched in Japan. 3 1 on the way to Stavanoa. Backhanded play by Ransom deep in the hole and got him. Nice easy arm. Didn't have to really hump up to get it across the infield. Very relaxed in the way he played it. So the first out recorded. What's the stat? Is something like 84% of the time a leadoff walk scores in a professional baseball game? It did again. Schumacher walked to lead off this inning. There are a couple outs in this inning. The pitch is over for a strike, so it really was not, in essence, a leadoff walk. However, walks do tend to score with great regularity, and certainly today. Hey, if you're Nolan Ryan and you strike out 10 guys a game, you can afford to walk four or five. Sure. But if you're not a strikeout pitcher and you walk a lot of batters, you're in big trouble. 1-1 one, one to Bose. Lines that one into center field for a base hit. Anderson over to pick it up and new life with two outs and that brings Rico Washington to the plate. Might bring somebody else to the mound too. Well Driscoll has been working diligently for. Not that long which is if he's going to change he's going to wait till the last minute to give him a few more pitches but it doesn't look like he's going to make the change now. Nice slider on the inside edge that time. Washington coming up empty. And the one strike pitch in too tight. Monson with a nice backhanded save of that one. Five homers, 11 RBIs for Washington. He had carried. Washington had the RBI moniker while Ankeel was down. And that load's lifted now that Ankeel is back and tag Bose who just got that just got that base hit was on the DL as well. Bose just came off the DL here. Ankeel came off last week when we saw them up in Memphis. Ball three to Rico Washington. Too many pitches way out of the strike zone that don't even tempt the hitter to swing and too many pitches right down the middle. And lost him second walk of the inning. A 
What's your bullpen situation? Good shape. Uh, Driscoll, of course, a veteran split finger guy. I think we're going to make a double switch here. We'll see how this one goes. You know, you, uh, if you're a manager and you come out of the dugout and you're going to make a double switch, there's a sign that you can make by sticking your little finger out and your thumb out and right. moving it, indicating to the umpire you're going to make a double switch. But in Hawaii, that same hand motion is called mahalo, which is a greeting, right. a friendly greeting. So my brother lives in Hawaii. He called me one night after a game and he said, Larry, that's pretty cool the way when you go out to change pitchers, you give the umpire the mahalo. <laughs> and not bad at all. Not bad at all. The, the double switch will go like this. Tim Range Jr. will come in to play right field, replacing Barry Wesson. Range will bat ninth in the Round Rock batting order. Gotro leaves the ball game. And a Round Rock pitching change brought to you by the Round Rock Convention and Visitors Bureau. We're back in just a moment. Round Rock trailing 6-3. Welcome back, Travis Driscoll, the much-traveled right-hander for the Round Rock Express, six feet and 225, lives in Round Rock, comes on. Mr. Driscoll on the season is making appearance number 13, is one and two, 2.61 ERA, has worked 20 and two-thirds innings, and only surrendered 16 base hits, a 219 league-wide batting average. And what a strikeouts to walks ratio, Larry. Yeah, this guy, he really knows how to pitch. He, he was actually at, at spring training one year when I was managing. He's been around the game a long time. I don't think I've ever met a more delightful player in terms of attitude, uh, love for the game, you know, easy to get along with, hardworking, maybe just a little bit short on velocity, but uh, he knows how to pitch. Can throw the split hard, can throw it as a change. Runners at first and second and two going. And there it was. Hanson couldn't handle it. Strike one. That's a difficult pitch if you don't see it a lot. And not a lot of guys throw it out of the bullpen, do they? No, usually it's the starters. Although you will find a few. Rob Nen had a great one and, and helped him become one of the game's best closers years ago. Risco works. Same thing. Same the thing spot. about a split is that it has loose spin but it doesn't have breaking ball spin. So a lot of times the, the hitter can't pick up the spin at all. It looks like a fastball. When you're tracking a, a slider, there's a little dot in the middle where, that you can see the way it's spinning. And when, when it's a curveball, you can see it tumbling over. You can see the spin. But with a split, you can't really read the spin very easily. And even if you can, some of them are going to go down a lot, some mm -hmm. a little, and some not at all. So it's a very effective pitch, and the only reason I think that more pitchers don't use it is that a lot of guys just can't get it near the strike zone. Well, it's a field pitch for him, and he'll tell you that it's not the easiest thing in the world to master. But he's done quite well with it. And there you are. As he strikes out, Hanson comes in and does exactly what he needed to do. Driscoll with a strikeout that ends a productive third inning they score three times they leave a couple in the middle of the fifth six to three Memphis over round run welcome back to the beautiful Dell Diamond as the youngsters are here at the ballpark enjoying their Memorial Day with their parents second online auction item 2006 Whataburger Field Texas flag autographed by Nolan Ryan Interestingly enough, there are also autographs from some members of that Texas League Championship Ball Club. The flag was signed on the night uh, the Corpus Christi Hooks won the Texas League Championship. Look Check at that signature, Mike. How about that? Check it try, out at try uh, to copy that one. RRExpress.com and CCHooks.com. <laughs> Back when I was playing, I could do just about everybody's signature on the whole team. Oh mercy! So sometimes if somebody wanted an <laughs> autograph ball, I'd sign most of them myself. But there is no way. I could copy Nolan Ryan's <laughs> signature. Tim Raines Jr. looks at one that sails inside. Ball one. Raines part of a double switch that took Barry Wesson out of the ball game. A 273 batter. Raines with some pop has a couple of home runs. That next pitch is a strike. 
9,645 at the Dell Diamond, the Express Pass, the 5 million fan mark. Wow. But that's a, such a great deal for the Astros. You know, not only do they get to have a relationship with Nolan Ryan and his family, but they get both of their farm clubs, Round Rock and Corpus, close to Houston, where if they right. want to send somebody to look at a player that they're thinking about calling up, they could just get in the car and drive. It's, it's really an ideal setup. And also for the fans, because if you see a guy come through here, Hunter Pence, he's in the big leagues, you want to take a weekend and go see the Astros, you can watch the guy you were watching a couple of months ago play at Round Rock. It's amazing how many people here, as that one's pounded into left field, racing back goes to left fielder, and he'll put it away for the out. Nice running grab by Schumacher. Larry, too, it, over the course of these seven years, there are several players that are up there. Roy Oswalt came through that 2000 season, as did Ensberg. You've got uh, Brad Lidge. You've got Chad Qualls. Uh, all around the infield and outfield, vestiges of Round Rock Express players, and now Hunter Pence has... Corpus Christi hooks, as well as Round Rock Express moniker on his back. Well, you know, the Astros have had winning records uh, for 12 of the last 13 years, and one of the big reasons is the players that have come up through the farm system. Uh, they've had some, made some good trades, and they've signed some free agents that have helped, but uh, if you don't have a good farm system, you're in trouble, and the Astros have had a very good farm system for the last decade or more. Castellanos whipping that one over the outside corner. But what you worry about is, you know, if you keep finishing up in the standings, you don't get the, the good draft pick. And after 10 or 15 years like this, without having the real the top draft pick, uh, if all your guys make it to the major leagues, all the guys with a lot of ability and there's nobody left, then you can have a problem, and they might have one now. Burke pops up an 0-2 pitch. Tag Bose puts it away. Two outs here in this fifth inning. And then that where, that's where you get to the point where a front office has to use very intelligent movement, acquiring six-year veteran free agents to put in a place like Round oh, yeah. Rock or Corpus. Veteran free agents to really to help a minor league team be competitive. And also you have to uh, make some good moves at the winter meetings, particularly in uh, the Rule 5 draft where you can pick a guy up without spending a whole lot of money. But usually the teams that are at the peak uh, and expect to contend don't, draft too many guys in the Rule 5 because they don't think they can keep them, and then they have to pay the money back plus a penalty. Castellanos continues his domination, has retired all eight he's faced, has struck out two of those over two and two-thirds innings of relief in a 6-3 to three Memphis lead here in the fifth inning. Ooh, wicked breaking ball. Yeah, from what I'm seeing, this guy could get somebody out in a higher league. And there's only one higher one, leg. Only one. <laughs> and I'll bet you he keeps going like this. You'll see him there. Two balls and one strike. Brother. That'll be the fascinating thing about watching minor league baseball on a regular basis as you do, Mike, is that you can see players as they improve and try to figure out which ones have a chance to compete in the big leagues. That's right back to the pitcher. Knocks it down. He's got to go get it. Got loose. And up and down again, nine straight retired by Castellanos as we finish five. Round Rock trails up to six to three from the Dell Diamond. Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. Mike Caps with Niall Maxwell, the mayor of Round Rock, 6-3 to three Memphis over the Round Rock Express. This is an interesting place, this Dell Diamond. You guys uh, from Round Rock uh, welcoming the Ryan Sanders group here. Uh, how's this area changed since the Dell Diamond opened? Oh, Mike, it's explosive growth, uh, since, especially since 2000. And the Dell Diamond and uh, the Ryan Sanders base has grown right along with us. Uh, we've raised kids out here and, you have. and all over Round Rock and Central Texas. It's interesting, too. Jay Miller calls this place Round Rock's uh, front porch, and I, I think it's taken on that connotation through the years. It, uh, you know, it, it's a wonderful place. I'll give you a perfect example. I've got uh, four children, and we've raised them right out here at the Dell Diamond. Uh, they could no more tell you sometimes what the score of the game is, but it's a social happening for uh, uh, for adolescents, for teenagers, for uh, children of all ages. Round Rock manager here, <laughs> Mayor Niall Maxwell, one of our longtime friends since we've been here. Uh, this is a minor league baseball venue, of course. 
as Tom, and Matt, Matt Pagnazzi has a two-ball, two-strike count. Minor League Baseball venue, but a lot of other things go on here. I've emceed some events in the offseason here, and what does it do for a community to have a place like this? It's not only a baseball venue, but uh, a place for concerts and uh, social functions, conventions, that sort of thing. Well, well, first of all, we could not have a better a, a better corporate citizen than the Round Rock Express. They've opened these doors up to numerous events. The, the Mission of Mercy serving over 1,000 of our uh, most needy here in, in Williamson County just last fall, Mike. I mean, time after time, month after month, they open the doors up. Uh, 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 the United Heritage Center, the ballpark, the mezzanines, every part of the ballpark we've used. It is a community venture, obviously, and it does keep people coming back, doesn't it? Oh, you know, people of all ages, too. The, uh, kind, of the most, uh, kind of the most fun things about the Dell Diamond is just, just go out there and try to walk between the base paths along the concourse. It'll take you 30 minutes because about so every five steps, yeah. you know somebody. Sure, sure. Niall Maxwell, the Round Rock Mayor, is our guest as we play here. Memphis leading 6-3 to three in the top half of the sixth inning. Memorable moments. I mean, it started, uh, Larry Durker and I were talking about it, uh, Niall, during the uh, first couple of innings. It, it started with that Texas League Championship season in 2007, which he, uh, Hollywood couldn't have scripted that better. And just talk a little bit about some of the more memorable moments you've seen out here. Oh, what a, what a, what a, magical, uh, what a magical season that was with uh, Ginter and... Uh oh. <laughs> well, a pinch speaking hitter. of memorable, <laughs> yes. Well, that's a uh, home run has turned it into a seven to three ball game. As John Nelson has taken Travis Driscoll deep to up it to seven to three. But, but but how about Roy Oswald coming that first season and having having Ginter here, Texas. Uh, a league player of the year in Innsburg, and I, and now we're watching these uh, uh, the, these these men play on the Astros. That that first year was was so magical. It, it was our first experience, Central Texas's first experience with professional baseball in quite some time, and we filled the stadium every night. It was like I said earlier. It was it was more than just baseball. It was a social happening all season long, especially that first season. The thing that amazes me, too, about it, and, and as we finish here, I want you to comment on this. Um, it There's still, you walk in those stands, you sit down, there's still the passion, still the intensity, still flocks of people coming out. It doesn't happen in minor league baseball. Maybe two, three, four years, not eight. It just doesn't happen anyplace else. Well, now I think that's a testament to uh, the Ryan family. Uh, Mike, I really do. That they keep the uh, they keep the community of Central Texas and Round Rock energized year after year. That they keep the, the motivation. They keep things new. They keep things exciting. And their dedication to the game of baseball and to the community of Round Rock is what keeps us all coming back. And you got a Round Rock guy pitching right here. Travis Driscoll lives in Round Rock, Texas, in the off season. That one downstairs. Three and one to Schumacher. 7-3 Memphis. We're speaking with Niall Maxwell, the mayor of Round Rock, Texas. Growth. We've got uh, freeways opening up here. The toll roads have made this ballpark more accessible. It's going to open Austin up even more as Driscoll walks Schumacher. It's going to make the ballpark more accessible. And as we grow, that's going to be so important because this, it, honestly, this area was in need of freeway systems, and, and we're beginning to get those. Good thing because they're they're talking two to two and a half million people over the next ten to fifteen years to be here total. Well, like the governor has often said, and I've often said, if you can't move your move your people around, and you can't move your goods and commerce around, then you're going to go stagnant. Mm -hmm. You've got to have roads. You've got to be able to uh, to provide mobility not only for. Uh, 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 for your citizens, but for business as well. And I think we've done a very good job. You know, we, uh, Reed and, and I and Commissioner uh, in, in, uh, uh, Ron Morrison uh, unveiled the new Dell Diamond sign, uh, exit sign uh, off 130 the other day. And that was a proud moment for us. Well, it's uh, one of those situations, it's win-win for everybody, having all these people here day after day, night after night. As that one shot down the left field line for extra bases. And let's see how this will end up. They're going to stop the runners at second and third. And McCoy gets his second base hit. And Driscoll in some trouble. 
Uh, Niall, it's always a pleasure to see you out here at the Dell Diamond. Always a pleasure to visit. And good luck uh, in this tenure as mayor. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Well, it's Ni always a pleasure, Mike. Thank you very much for having you us. You bet. Niall Maxwell, the Round Rock mayor. We're one out here in this sixth inning. A run is in, but Driscoll's in some trouble with runners at first and or second and third. And like Round Rock will go ahead and walk Rick Ankiel and well they should I think <laughs> Mr. Ankiel has done some damage has driven in five of the seven runs with a three run homer a solo shot and an RBI double Ankiel showing the baseball world that he has successfully made the transition from pitching to the outfield and there's ball three as Driscoll serves it up to Munson so as Larry Durker steps back in here Driscoll faces a bases loaded situation. And let's take a look at these Ankeel home runs. Third inning shot went flying out of here into the bullpen. That was the solo with two outs in the inning. And there's the one that really, that really blew the game wide open, blew the doors off the three run shot that move. sailed he over the bullpen. He turned around to see where it was going to He land. crushed that one, and it was the pitch after the, the pitcher uh, failed to, to make a play on a bunt. If he'd made the play, there would have been a man on second to base open, and he might have been able to pitch around it. Thank you. Nick Stabenoa with the bases loaded. Swings and misses. But he'd really got nobody to blame but himself, both for the home run pitch and also for not making the play on the bunt. Stabenoa on the afternoon has a base hit in three times. Has that dark goatee look working for himself. The one strike pitch. High drive to left. You can forget about that one. That's going to sail way on back there. Grand slam home run off. Driscoll has upped it to 11 to 3. Memphis. The home runs flying out of the Dell Diamond off the bats of the Memphis Redbirds. You're going to have to get Reed Ryan back in here. <laughs> we got about one, two, three while he was on the air. Need some outs. And let's see this. And it got out of here quickly. Larry is that ball way, way yeah. back. Look at these guys are charging it. These kids on the berm went all the way up in the seats. So two home runs in the inning. The grand slam off Driscoll. I Both. think uh, Stabado will probably stick with that dark goatee look. Yes. <laughs> and wisely so. And interestingly enough, as that ball's bounced into the hole between short and third, fielded by Ransom for the second out of the inning. Keep in mind, too, the walk led to that grand slam. Pick your poison kind of situation for Driscoll there, though, when you stop and think about it. Ankeel already hit two home runs. Rico Washington hitless in two times with a walk as he stands in. 11 to 3 Memphis, two gone in the sixth. That one bounded foul up the first base side. Memphis facing a bus ride home tonight of better than 10 hours on those sleeper buses. And oh, what a way to celebrate the holiday. <laughs> Just trucking on down the road, huh? <laughs> Back to the screen. And Round Rock flying out first thing tomorrow to open up a four-game set in Fresno. Four in Sacramento, a day off, and back mean, to Oklahoma City. You're not going to take the bus to Fresno? I don't think so. I'm not going. I'm going to fly out there. <laughs> Have a ticket, everything. That one misses upstairs. Washington, a 270 batter. Round Rock with some kind of work to do in the middle innings, trailing 11-3. Washington staying alive. It's interesting when we talk to guys like Niall Maxwell, leadership around here, and how central this Dell Diamond has been over the last seven years and now eight to what's going on and the growth patterns and Central Texas growing like it is. So, Driscoll striking out Washington to end another productive inning. They score five times on a three on, on a solo homer and a grand slam homer. We go to the bottom of the sixth, 11 to three, Memphis.
And now, Astro's Prospect Pipeline, brought to you by MD Anderson Cancer Center. Hunter Pence was ranked as the number one prospect in the Houston Astros farm system by Baseball America. Drafted by the Astros in the second round of the 2004 draft, Pence batted 296 with 59 hits in just 51 games with Tri-City. He hit 338 at Lexington. Last year, he led the AA Corpus Christi Hooks with 28 home runs, 95 RBI, and 97 runs scored. Bam Bam is what they called me last year in Corpus because I get up there and I'm kind of jumpy and just swing bat as hard as I can. The Texas League and Futures All-Star also swiped 17 bases, proving he has speed to go with his power. I'm kind of local. I, I spent a lot of my off-season time in Austin. Great restaurants, you know, there's nice places to hang out, good music. Funny story, last year in Corpus, is Arkansas Travelers bullpen would throw crackers all around me. I have like so many birds around me, like I could barely take a step without stepping on a bird. And they were just sitting there dying laughing. You know, it was a pretty good prank. Another prospect in the Astros prospect pipeline. Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. The Memphis Redbirds pitching staff has retired the last 13 Round Rock Express hitters. And on comes left hander Ryan Moe. That's M E A U X, Ryan Moe. He's from the same uh, area that Gotro's from? No, sir. He's from Denver, <laughs> Colorado, believe it or not. A 29 year old. We'll give you the numbers on Mr. Ryan Moe in just a moment. Brooks Conrad has started out. Round Rock down by eight, 11 to three. Well, he's 0 and 3 with a 661. Uh, when your eight runs down, uh, you like to face a guy that's got an ERA like that. Maybe you got a chance. Let's see if Brooks Conrad can get it turned around. Brooks, he just missed a base hit his last time up, is 0 for 2. But you know, no matter what happens, the worst position you can be in after this game is two games out of first. That's it. Line drive deep to left field. That ball is sailing up, and it is foul. Conrad unloading on a 74-mile-an-hour breaking ball. Interestingly enough, Larry, Conrad hits in the 315s, 320s against lefties, and only hits righties at 175. So this is his not only his power side, but his base hit side as well. It used to be that way with uh, Ken Caminetti. Switch hitting, and when he first came up, he hit better right-handed than left-handed. But of course, you face more right-handers, so you end up hitting left-handed more. By the end of his career, he was a better left-handed hitter. Most stayed away from the middle in on Conrad that time as that pitch drift away, drifted away. That one smacked way down that left field side foul. Conrad getting good looks and really swinging the bat hard. Brooks a PCL All-Star last year. Backdoor slider there, strike three. Beautiful pitch. Boy, Castellanos had three very nice innings. Right at the back door. Well, he may have disagreed. He may have disagreed with the call, Larry, but it was a pretty good looking pitch, actually, as Munson looks at a yeah, pitch. Yeah, it was that drops a great pitch. Uh, one of the first few at bats yeah. I had in the big leagues, uh, uh, that happened to me it was Ron Peronowski. Of course, it was only a year out of high school, and I never saw a left handed pitcher throw breaking balls away that would break back and catch the corner. And, you know, as soon as you see it way out there, you just give up on it. Munson hits a high drive into center field. Ankeo races back. He's going to watch that one sail onto that deep right center field burn. Eric Munson on loads on Ryan Moe. Seven home runs, 24 RBIs now for Munson, and that cuts the lead to 11 to four Memphis. Munson's second RBI of the afternoon. It's a pretty good high ball hitter for a a left-handed batter. I noticed that last year in Houston. Doesn't really have that uppercut home run swing. You've got more of a level swing, but he leveled off on that one. Cody Ransom up with one out. And breaker very tight at the knees, ball one. Ransom has struck out both times up. That one dropping inside.
Six home runs in the ball game. And five of those yeah. coming by the Memphis Redbirds. Bombs away on Memorial Day. Yes, sir. <laughs> Memphis has a grand slam, a three run shot. So from just this game and having played a couple of exhibition games here when I was managing, uh, it, this looks like a pretty good hitter's park to me. That one rolled up the third base side. It is especially. I think Nolan must have made some mistakes on his measurements. You think? Yeah. <laughs> well, wh how could Nolan Ryan be the host at a hitter's ballpark? Well, fans Easy. come Score out. a lot of runs and fans draw a lot out. of fans. And fans come out. Take the money to the bank and say, great ballpark. That's it. Normally, we get prevailing southerly breezes in here that blows the ball out toward left field. Don't see so much breeze in here today. So the first walk issued by Mo. And Mark Sacamano. Well, we're going to get action in the bullpen. A little conference on the mound. The pitching coach, Dyer Miller, former Baltimore Orioles right-hander, is the Memphis Redbirds pitching coach. And you talk about you were able to imitate all these different signatures when you were a player. Well, everybody on the Memphis bench has a Dyer Miller imitation. He's got this big, deep, husky voice. You know? <laughs> and, and they all walk around. Look, 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 I'm doing dire. I'm doing okay. dire. Listen, listen, I'm doing dire. That's what they that's what they tell you. That's okay. I watched him in the minor leagues at Dallas Fort Worth, and I wouldn't even try to begin to imitate the guy. <laughs> Sacamano has looked at two that's missed. Sacamano has some pop, seven homers, 24 RBIs. Popped it up. And you know, when you go out the mound to talk to a guy and he's not having one of his better days, and his stuff's not real good, his control's not real good, there's really only so much you can say. And uh, a lot of the time, you're just saying it to let somebody else get warmed up in the bullpen. They're getting closer with these pop ups, Larry. This one's just off to our right. Sacramento has got quite a few extra base hits. 11 doubles, a triple, and seven home runs, and a good batting average, a pretty good on base average, but he doesn't walk that much. He's been getting on base with his bat. Uh, dropped that big hammer on him. Second strikeout for Mo in this sixth inning. Josh Anderson's one for two, has driven in one of the four round rock runs, and 11 to four. Memphis lead the story for the Memphis Redbirds home runs flying out of this ballpark like crazy Schumacher Rick and Keel has two including a three run shot a grand slam by Nick Stavanoa. Other than that uh, round rocks had pretty good pitching today. <laughs> that one a little bit too tight to Anderson ball. <laughs> Well, you got him one, two, three. When uh, Reed Ryan was in here talking to you, got him one, two, three in the second. It's been ever since then. It's been a problem. Yeah. This fresh had the lead after one, three to two. Yep. Then the wheels came off. Ryan Moe coming into the ball game with a huge lead has given up a solo home run to Munson in this inning. And he strikes out Anderson struck out the side gave up a homer and a walk otherwise. We're through six innings at the Dell Diamond Memphis 11 round rock four. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back, 11 to four Memphis over Round Rock as we go to the top half of the seventh inning. Fan summertime, as we know, is grilling time. Before you fire up that grill, why don't you take a listen to Nolan Ryan's Beef Tip of the Week. Hi, I'm Nolan Ryan, and here's my Beef Tip of the Week. Make sure to cook burgers at at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit and cook steaks at at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, go to NolanRyanBeef.com to order your own guaranteed tender beef. Welcome back. Travis Hansen has looked at a strike from Travis Driscoll. That one foul back. Two quick strikes on Hansen. Hansen hit listen three times. Couple of homers, 10 RBIs. Boy, they have jammed their hits and runs for the most part. The upper four in the batting order, which is what you would expect. Memphis hitters gone wild today. 11 runs on 10 hits into the seventh inning. Travis Driscoll, a veteran, went to Texas Tech. Austin Anderson High, so he's been a Central Texan for most of his life. Chopper down toward Ransom. Easy scoop. One gone here in the seventh inning. You can tell, Larry, when a guy really is relaxed at his position, really feels it. Ransom, you get that feeling when you yeah, watch you him do. play shortstop. Everything, he makes everything look easy. Catcher Matt Pagnozzi. Also hitless in three times. Now he's not as he lines that one into left field. Edgar Gonzalez, normally the second baseman for the Memphis Redbirds, will step into pinch hit. So the day will be done for lefty Ryan Moe. Gonzalez on the season 304 batter has a couple of homers, 18 RBIs. Only hitting at a 167 clip, has two doubles against Round Rock. A young man, Larry, who was widely toured through the Florida Marlins minor league system last year. We saw him at AAA Albuquerque toward the end of last year. And he went around on that one, says the first base umpire. They don't get upset about that when it's strike one. No. On down in the count, yeah. yes. <laughs> Driscoll working that split inside. Driscoll has the same look on his face no matter what the situation. One of these guys at 35 years old that's been so many places in baseball and seen so much, experienced so much, not much rattles him at all. But working behind in the count now to Gonzalez. With one gone in this seventh inning. So Gonzalez will be looking for a fastball to drive here. Foul that one down the third base side, skipping out into the outfield. You can see Bunsen setting up on the inside corner. And he got the fastball to drive, but because of the location of the fastball, he drove it foul. Cloud cover now. Shading the sunshine here at the Dell Diamond. Is that one fouled into the screen that protects the dugout? The lower level of the dugout railing down that third base side. Yep. Five home runs in the ball game. And Keel. Or for the Redbirds, uh, five homers. And Keel, three for three, two homers, five RBIs. Hugo Castellanos, as that one's lifted up in the air to left field. Breeze has this one and 
Back goes the center fielder Anderson to put it away. Well, that ball carried a lot farther than I thought it would. Well, I just noticed a little bit of a breeze kicking up out towards center field gave it a boost. Yeah, and I just noticed some dark clouds uh, hovering overhead, too, apparently having blown in here after the others blew out this morning with all that rain we had. Driscoll getting that ball up on the inner third of the plate. Back to the top of the order for Skip Schumacher. Schumacher has one of the five Memphis home runs. Has walked a couple of times. Scored three of the 11 Memphis runs. Let off the game with a homer. He did indeed. Interesting story about Schumacher. Last year when he was sent down from St. Louis to Memphis, he and his wife got in the car. He, he was put in the back seat by his wife. He went to sleep. She took a wrong turn on 55. Called from Chicago the next day <laughs> and said, I don't think we're going to make it to the game. We took a wrong turn on 55. Now that's real oversleeping there. <laughs> like Pascual Perez circling around Atlanta for three or four hours yeah. before he found the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> they eventually got there. Two balls and two strikes to Schumacher. But this is a guy, they give him 72 hours to report. And when he was sent back down this year, didn't waste a minute. Came right down from St. Louis and got to work in Memphis. Had hits and three straight coming down. Well, Schumacher didn't like that one, but I'll tell you, in this situation, Driscoll striking out Schumacher. No more, no more scoring here in the seventh inning. 11-4. Into the seventh inning stretch, Memphis over Round Rock. Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. Seventh inning stretch on Memorial Day. Flags are flying all over this ballpark. And a brand new pitcher for the Memphis Redbirds. The Jason Jennings Autographed Express hat is our next online item for auction. Jason made, of course, a rehab start here last week for the Houston Astros. Go to rrexpress.com or cchooks.com and give them your bid for the Jason Jennings autographed Round Rock Express baseball cap. Well, and the Astros really need Jennings back in the rotation. They've been playing a lot of games like this one here this afternoon, getting beat and getting pounded. Brand new pitcher on for the Memphis Redbirds in the bottom half of the seventh inning is the right-hander Mark Worrell. Worrell, 6'2 and uh, 215, 24-year-old from Boynton Beach, Florida. Pitched at Double-A Springfield last year. Having a pretty good year. He is indeed against Round Rock. This is the second time we've seen him, I believe. And overall, he is indeed having a good year, 2.25 ERA. Opponents only hitting him at 130. Larry, that's pretty doggone effective coming out of the bullpen. Strike I don't care what one. league you're in. That's right. And this is a pretty good league. Yes, it is. A triple-A baseball is, as they say, just a step away from Major League Baseball for a lot of these guys. Worrell used that, that uh, little bit of a below sidearm delivery. Mike Rodriguez, the pinch hit. We were talking about him in the press box before the game. Mike has had some shoulder problems and was diagnosed as having had a little bit of a calcium buildup in there, but they have worked around it, and he's going to be back to full-time outfield duty in the not-too-distant future. This is a young man, a really, really good hitter, very, very fast, and another one of the natural center fielders with the Round Rock Express I've been telling you about, Larry. Couple homers, 12 RBIs, a 253 batting average, and only sparse duty this 2007 season. The boy can cover some ground no matter where you put him in the outfield. 11 to 4 Memphis. Bottom of the seventh. Little crossfire delivery that time. That's an unusual pitching motion. Mike, of course, always with that speed, a candidate to bunt and 
looking at a strike. Yeah, it, it, his delivery almost looks like he's planning to throw submarine and then decides at the last minute to try to throw over him. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a lot of torque on his shoulder, I would think, with a delivery like that. That one fouled off. Mike Rodriguez, of course, one of the members of that College World's champion University of Miami ball club back in the early 2000s. Well, working very, very deliberately here. Mike just got that one off the end of the bat. You can see uh, as he starts into his motion, uh, it looks like he's going to throw the ball down underhand, and then his arm comes up about parallel to his shoulder. And he does have a lot of torque, and it gives him a lot of uh, tailing action on his fastball. Which no doubt explains a lot about that 130 against batting average. Very effective when you watch the movement on that fastball. Sometimes you wonder what the evolution of a delivery like this is. Nobody would teach that. Worked pretty well to Rodriguez. But it's kind of like Jeff Bagwell's batting stance. And he just kept getting a little lower and a little lower and spreading his legs a little further and a little further. But before long, he was in a batting stance that nobody had ever seen before. That thing had a nice little upward sort of tail to it as yeah. Rodriguez struck out. That's three straight round rock hitters struck out by Memphis relievers. And that'll bring up Tim Raines Jr. who's 0 for 1. Eight strikeouts in the game now in the seventh inning. Raines Jr. of course nicknamed Rock after his father the all star Tim Raines. These two talk Raines and Raines Jr. once a day. Reigns actually deeply involved with his son's baseball career as as an advisor more than anything else Larry talking to Tim Junior about it he really really loves the relationship he has with his dad. Well, his dad was quite a ball player. That one's lined down the right field side foul. Interestingly and we've had this discussion with Jackie Moore I want to get your take on it. We've had so many come through whose dads have had professional playing backgrounds and those guys tend to operate and move easier around the clubhouse than perhaps some who don't have yeah, that well kind they, of background. They've, they've been around the clubhouse when they were kids. But the problem you can sometimes have when you have a father who's played is that uh, he'll be coaching his son to do something that's different from what the coach on the team is coaching him to do. Wow four straight strikeouts now and two straight for Worrell is. Reigns took a rip at one high and outside. Chris Burke, one for three. 11 to four in Memphis with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning as Round Rock finishes an eight game homestand with this ball game. Heading out to Fresno tomorrow. Four there, four in Sacramento, a day off, and four in Oklahoma City before returning June the 11th. And that will be Larry's next visit here as that's popped into center field. And Keel dashes in, can't get to it. Neither could the second baseman Washington, so a two hit afternoon for Chris Burke. That ball game will be part uh, the beginning of a quick four game homestand against the New Orleans Zephyrs. Burke getting a good look at that, Larry. Yeah, he just kind of flared it in there. Eric Bruntlett one for three as Burke was has scored one of the four round rock runs. Sometimes you wonder how teams get their nicknames. Uh, the Express is obvious but the Zephyrs was the name of a team that was in the Rocky Mountains and the Zephyr is a mountain breeze. And now you end up with Zephyrs in New Orleans and Jazz in Utah playing basketball. Yeah. Sometimes there's just no explanation for anything in life is there. One strike to Bruntlett. They have a mascot, 
the New Orleans Zephyrs do. That's a nutria. <laughs> Seriously. He's named he's named Boudreaux. Mm -hmm. And I You're was like thinking, having an armadillo around here. I think so. Boy, nice hop to that one at 91 miles an hour off the arm of Oreo. For years, the Memphis Redbirds had had a standard white block M on those caps. They've gone to that Milwaukee Brewers looking M now. Good pitch. He thought it was over. Yep, he was headed to the dugout. Royal working from the far third base side of that pitcher's rubber comes in tight at the letters to Bruntlett. We talk about it on our radio broadcast quite a bit, Larry, about Bruntlett's. <laughs> There's his left. That, that's Boudreaux right there. That's what we're talking about. That big buck teeth he does. That's fouled off of Pagnazzi's headgear. Talking about Bruntlett, three and a half years to finish Stanford with an economics degree. Very, very easy moving cat. Just not a lot of excitement going on. He's just nice and relaxed. And he comes to the plate. The PA plays some hard rock Ted Nugent music. So a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's got to change uh, that. That. Hit Pagnazzi so hard. L look at this. Great job, guys, catching that. That rattled his cage pretty good. He had to go get a new, a new headgear. So Brentwood obviously knows enough about economics to understand the difference between Houston and Round Rock. Yes, sir. And I imagine he's pretty eager to get back. Lines that one down the right field side. It'll slice into the seats foul. Boy, what a great break Burke got on that one. Chris, more than halfway to third <laughs> when he made the turn around. Full count to Eric Bruntlett. And striking out the side after giving up one base hit. A very successful seventh inning for Mark Worrell. 11 to 4, Memphis over Round Rock into the eighth inning. You never dance this song, Brooklyn? I know about the song, but. Yeah. You didn't just sit over in the corner, did you? No. No, okay. All right. They have more of the voice to man and R&B bands. And well, so, uh, I know that beautiful, the good stuff. that beautiful wife of yours. I know you can dance. You had to learn how to dance. How about that Brooks Conrad? Can he dance? Don't know about that. Can play some baseball. Has nine homers. That's your IBC Bank sounds of the game. Jackie Moore, the Round Rock skipper, and Brooks Conrad talking about dance music. At batting practice, some interesting conversations at batting practice as teams get ready for that night's game. And I'll bet you Larry Durker has heard more than a few. Yeah, we've heard a lot, but uh, people always ask me what goes on when they come out to the mound. And I really can't think of anything funny that ever happened when I was either pitching or managing out on the mound. It's usually just wasting time for a relief pitcher to get ready or uh, trying to make a guy stop and and reevaluate and start over. Scott Sauerbeck comes on to pitch, is greeted with a base hit into right center field off the bat of Mike McCoy, who's going to make a turn and try for second base. No, oh, he's going to go back as Anderson rifled that throw in from right center field, the Round Rock center fielder. So Mike McCoy has his third hit of the afternoon, a leadoff eighth inning single. Well, let's see if a left-hander can get uh, Ankiel out. Sauerbeck, 1-0 on the season, an ERA right under four. Opponents hitting him at 281. 
They're not doing quite as well as you might think. He spent some time in the big leagues, too. Situational lefty at Cleveland and Oakland last year. Check swing foul back to the screen. Ankeel diving and get trying to get out of the way. Check the swing. Ankeel has two home runs and an RBI double, a total of five runs batted in on the afternoon. Going three for three with a walk. Scored on the grand slam homer off the bat of Stavanoa, who's standing behind Ankeel waiting in the on deck area. Nice backhanded play. Three, six, and not going to get Ankeel, who runs pretty well up that first baseline. But again, looks like we retired him. He's still on base, but we got an out. <laughs> Fielder's choice ground ball. As Sacamano showing some nice range to his right that time, backhanding that one. Depending on where that first baseman feels the ball, Larry, that's not always the easiest play to execute. No, it's not because a lot of time the, the runner is right in between you and the guy you're trying to throw the ball to. And you usually don't have time to take a step to, to clear a, an easy angle for yourself. So you have to try to feather it around the runner or throw it over the runner. And that could create some problems seeing the throw for the shortstop. Stavanoa has that grand slam homer. He's two for four on the afternoon. As Sauerbeck paints that outside corner. Stavanoa has upped his home run output to seven. Good breaking ball there. Occasionally, Larry, you'll see Sauerbeck drop it down to sidearm. And he's probably more against left handed batters, I would guess. Correct. Looking forward to our next game together. Larry and I will be here on June the 11th. That's a 7.05 start against the New Orleans Zephyrs. Ryan Sanders baseball game of the week. You'll have one. You have a corpus game between now and then or two, don't I you? I think I do. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the schedule is. Uh, no, the that's the 21st you. and 24th. So, hook, so we'll get to, we'll get to you before they do again. I'm working my way down. <laughs> well, at least I can end up in rookie league. At least summer. you're working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's. <laughs> Memphis with an 11 to 4 lead broke it wide open with a three run Ankeel homer in the fifth inning and five runs including a grand slam homer by Stavanoa in the sixth. Did he go around? Yes sir. Stavanoa not too thrilled. The double indignity there. The fall down and look awkward and strike out doing it. Time to chase a breaking ball in the dirt. Ooh, right to the knee. I'm not sure he swung either. It looked uh, like he, not either. It looked like he did live, but on the replay, it looked like he might have held back. If he did, the only thing he held back was the bat. That's it. Tag Bo's aid. One for four. Two gone in the top of the eighth inning from the Dell Diamond on Memorial Day. Nice little 84 mile an hour cutter that Jose couldn't catch up with. Tacabano is playing behind the runner at first and not so much because he can't run but just because they don't think he'll steal with this widespread in the score. One and one to Jose. These two teams Memphis and Round Rock will meet twice more this season. Be one. four and four after this game unless uh, Round Rock comes up with a miraculous rally. AutoZone Park in Memphis would remind you, Larry, a little bit more of a major league venue. Smaller in stature, but uh, still they draw well there. Not yeah. like not like Round Rock, not the kind of fan fervor in Memphis that we have. In. But the important thing is how close is it to Beale Street? It's you'd love it. It's uh, <laughs> less than a block you can and walk a half. there. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's it's less than a block and a half from there. Uh, you're right. Just to the east of the Peabody Hotel. 
Do some duck watching. Duck watching indeed. Nice pitch by Sauerbeck that strikes out the side. Memphis comes up empty, save a base hit. They leave a runner in the middle of the eighth inning. Memphis 11, Round Rock 4. Another IBC Bank sounds of the game. Ricky Bennett is one of our favorites. He's the assistant general manager of the Houston Astros. This game is tracking a little bit like some of the Astros games we've seen this last week. Uh, bang, bang, everybody's pretty close, and then two big innings. Uh, cyclical thing, I think, don't you? Yeah, it's been that way for us for the last couple of weeks here in Round Rock and, and obviously in, in Houston. Uh, we've had that one big inning where we've scuffed a little bit, throwing strikes and getting guys out. But hopefully we can put together a couple of runs here this afternoon. Well, and uh, get back on track. This is a pretty good uh, ball club, it, just the base of it. Brooks Conrad trying to break out of a big hitting street, uh, slump here, hitting at 215. Looks at a strike. Brooks, you're teaching to catch. I think that's very interesting at this juncture in his career. Yeah, that's something that Tim and I talked about in spring training. You know, we really felt like putting Brooks behind the plate could help his value, increase his value as a utility player at the major league level. And... Um, we approach Brooks with it through the first part of the season, and it's something that he's open to. Ricky Bennett, the Astros assistant GM, is our guest on IBC Sounds of the Game. Brooks Conran also brings a, uh, an intangible, in my mind, to, to a ball club, and that is the guy is not going to lose. He just refuses to lose. He refuses to uh, do anything other than improve every facet of his game. Yeah, the more and more you watch Brooks, you realize that he has those intangibles. And, uh, you know, he comes to the ballpark every day ready to play. Uh, he's a grinder. He gets dirty day in and day out. And uh, he's going to do everything he can to possibly win the game for the ball club. And I don't think uh, that you'll see him in a hitting slump over a long period of time. This is he, He's got too much going for him as a hitter. And, and the work ethic is one of those things, I think, Ricky, that gets him by and out of jams all the time. Yeah, I've been here for the last three days, and he's really put together some good at-bats. You know, he's swinging the bat well right now. They're not all falling through for him, but uh, he's driving the ball to all parts of the field, and that's what you like to see in a young hitter when he's, when he's working through a slump. Ricky Bennett is here in the booth with us. He is the assistant general manager for the Houston Astros. Is Conrad doing a nice job here, working the count to two and two against this right-hander Warrell. Memphis has, and the Cardinals have in their minor league system, quite a few of these guys who are submariners and to side armors. Uh, and it, you don't see that all the time, and it makes it difficult when you pass through these guys uh, only eight times a year. Yeah, we've had our struggles with those guys today. They, uh, they're, throwing, they're throwing strikes, and we're having a tough time putting them in play today. Well, we went through the, a middle inning streak of 15 out of 16 retired. And it just happens. I mean, this is a this is a club round rock that has seen. We finally gotten to the point where it's become like a lot of triple A situations where you had to call some folks up early in the season. You didn't necessarily intend to do that. Nieve, the right hander that was in our rotation to start, mm -hmm. went down with that season ending elbow injury. Albers now back and forth back with us. Um, so trying to settle into a rotation at AAA, we're finding out now can be difficult. Oh, time. absolutely. That's the one thing Jack and I talked about yesterday. You know, we're a little banged up position player-wise. Mike Rodriguez has been, has been battling his shoulder injury here recently. Uh, Daniel Ardoin went down with a calf injury a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so we're starting to, starting to get healthy, and I think once we do, our club will start to settle down and play a lot better. One gone in this eighth inning. Ricky Bennett is the Astros' assistant GM. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on down the road, my man, and uh, do appreciate you dropping by. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks on the for ABC having me, Sounds of the game. Ricky Bennett, the Astros' assistant GM. Glad to see him here. One out in this eighth inning, as we said, and Eric Munson stands in. Munson has the only home run of the afternoon for the Round Rock Express. Five struck by the Memphis Redbirds. And let's see how he does against this right-handed pitcher, Warrell, as Larry Durker steps back to put the headsets on. Pop-up out in his center field. Racing in comes Ann Keel. Back goes the shortstop. And it'll be the left fielder to take over. Skip Schumacher for the out. That was one of those... Uh, triangle situations where it yeah. could have turned into the Bermuda Triangle very quickly. The Casey Stengel said about Babe Ruth that he hits them so high by the time they come down it looks like a union meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. 
Cody Ransom hitless in two times with a walk will stand in here. 11 to 4 Memphis. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Memorial Day Baseball and a great crowd of over 9,600 here on a Monday. And just a dandy tribute to baseball in general. And the military had a big role here today. That's lined in the left field. That's lost. It is up and gone. Cody Ransom. That is his seventh home run on the season. His 31st RBI, and that makes it 11 to 5 Memphis. We were talking in the clubhouse again today to Cody, and I think I mentioned something to you earlier in the ballgame about him homering every three days. Yes. This is this is the fourth since he's homered. Well, they'll have to go to extra innings so he can homer again and make up for it. And here it goes. They're gonna let us take another look at this one. No stride. A lot of pop. And perfectly timed. Got those arms extended and almost a textbook swing. Sakamano hits it up in the air to center field. And Keel races back. Back, back, back. That ball is on the top of the equipment shed and it is gone. Back to back homers. By Ransom and Sakamano. That's home run number eight for Mark Sakamano. And that cuts it to 11 to 6. Sakamano said. Sacramento says, if Ransom can hit one, I can too. That way up on that screen, that almost made it to the top of the shed. Almost half the hits in this game have been home runs. Yes, sir. Eight home runs in the ball game, five of those for Memphis. And coming back with some bombs like this, going on the road can give you a little momentum that you might not normally have had had you been really soundly routed here. And it is a five-run lead, but you can take some solace in some offensive performance late in the ball game. And there's the hats for home run dollars being passed around there, and a long-time minor league tradition. Anderson. That's why you want to play for a team that draws good crowds. Absolutely. You get 9,500 people out here. A dollar a fan comes out to a pretty good deal. It does. They've got a nice little system in the clubhouse about how they handle that. Player gets a certain amount. Rest goes into a kitty and it's divided up. So nobody gets the short end of the stick. One and two. To Josh Anderson, the center fielder for the Round Rock Express. Sacamano has been involved in a situation today where it, that's happened to him twice this year, where he's homered back to back with another player, Barry Wesson and Sacamano, on the last Round Rock homestand. Worrell getting that breaking pitch up and in, and Anderson's response was a foul ball. Anderson's batting approach has changed since the beginning of the year, Larry. Ron Jackson, the hitting coach, has gotten him to spread out a little bit and open up his stance ever so slightly. With the guy with this much speed that hits left handed, he certainly should be spending some time practicing his bunting. He's dragged bunted for hits four times this year. And when he gets that ball past the pitcher. Well, there's no contest if he gets it out towards second past the it, pitcher. It, it is indeed but, no contest. You know, the, the bunt down the third base side is. A good option too. Well, the first baseman Bozaid realized <laughs> that Anderson was coming quickly, and he raced to the bag ahead. Two runs for the Express on back-to-back -back homers. 11 to six, Memphis. As we go to the ninth.
11, 12, and 0 Memphis, 6, 8, and 0 Round Rock. Into the top half of the ninth inning and a brand new pitcher for the E train, Paul Estrada, the Venezuelan, 23 years old. And here's the Coastal Conservation Association catch of the game. Eric Brundlitz off the bat of Skip Schumacher with that diving, sliding yep. grab right off the grass. What a play, Larry. You, you know, that thing was You would sinking. never know that he is primarily an infielder. He played a lot of outfield when he was with the Astros, but was really the only guy that could play shortstop adequately to back up Adam Everett. He had the range and he had the arm, and he's good on the infield, too. In fact, uh, he made a key double play in one of the playoff games uh, that saved a win for the Astros against the Cardinals. For Eric, it's a matter of hitting. If he even just hits a little bit better than uh, he hit for the Astros, he'll stay in the big leagues. Well, he is certainly talented defensively, both on the infield and in the outfield. And he would be with the Astros right now if they hadn't signed Mark Loretta. Right. Paul Estrada in for the 20th time this season. Right-handed pitcher, as we said, pitch over for a strike. Estrada will throw a split a little bit harder than the one Driscoll throws. Had 134 strikeouts at Corpus last year. Averaged about 16 strikeouts per nine innings was the way that worked out. That's pretty good. If you As don't walk too many, you'd be working your way right up that ladder. And has met Triple A ball with mixed success. Rico Washington hammers that one into right field. Let's see if Reigns can gallop over, and he does to make the grab for the out. Reigns got a great break on that, Larry. And he's got the speed to make it pay off, too. Came by that naturally. You know, his dad uh, stole 800 and some bases in the big leagues and had a higher base stealing percentage than Ricky Henderson. Wow. Travis Hansen, the third baseman, has come up hitless in four times, has struck out a couple. That one drifting down. You know, Estrada has such a nice, easy motion. And just a baby at the AAA level. Boy, a wicked hop off Sacamano out in the right field. Yeah, that would probably be a hit, but it's a play that could have been made. You can see how that ball kicked up a lot higher than it seemed like it would, but it hit way out in front of Sacamano, so he had some time to adjust. He just wasn't able to get the glove up quickly enough. It goes in the books as the 13th base hit for the Memphis Redbirds. Matt Pagnazzi has one of those 13, one for four. That one whipped over the outside edge for a strike. Boy, you can see some thunderclouds building way behind center field with some rain pouring out of them. Two strikes to Pagnazzi. And there are those clouds right there. Yeah. Think of your uh, playing for Memphis. And you've got one inning left, and that rain comes in and starts raining. And you have a rain delay when you're looking at a 10 hour bus ride after it's over. That's all they need right now. You work, watch how quickly their reliever works in the night. <laughs> <laughs> There's that split missing. Oh, just below that's a pretty good for a ball. Oh, mercy. Tell me how this could not be a strike. Wow. Right over the middle of the plate, diving. I think a lot of times, Larry, you see umpires. Oh, that one ricocheted up. Well, that was not playable. No. Conrad. So the, uh, took that one off the chest, didn't he? The Memphis Ball Club has hit most of the home runs. And gotten almost all of the good luck. Boy, that one came right up. Brooks' sunglasses went one direction. He went another. And you can see just how much that ball, how much skip it had on it. Trainer Mike Freer out checking with him. The, the balls that are hit with topspin are 
frequently the most difficult ones to play because they will take that kangaroo hop and if that one wasn't that far in front of uh, Conrad on the last bounce. The one before that was pretty far out in front of uh, Sacramento. Brendan Ryan to pinch hit for the pitcher here. Ryan a shortstop by trade. We've seen him play short in all but two games this season against Round Rock. A 250 batter. Two aboard on infield singles. And the Round Rock defense obviously will be playing at double play depth trying to get out of the inning. With Memphis leading 11 to 6 in the ninth. That one hit sky high down that third base side. Ryan has one of the stiffest batting stances you will ever see. And hiding under that helmet, Larry, is a mohawk haircut of oh. grandiose proportions. Really? Yes, sir. He kind of leans back in his stance a little like Biggio, but even more. Yes, sir. He went around, says the first base umpire, Casey Mosier. Not much of an argument at all by Ryan. There. No. He knew he went. I never give a guy with one of those Mohawk haircuts a break. No. <laughs> Two strikes to Ryan. And not this time. Fouled out of the ballpark down the third base side. You know, it's interesting. You watch the crowd's reaction here night after night. And while they are firmly on the side of the Round Rock Express, Larry, you'll see them and watch them cheer outstanding plays by the other. By yeah, the that's other great. Club. You don't see that very many places. So St. Louis is the only place I can think of in the National League where they give you some applause if you do something especially good, even against their team. Rolled out towards short. Let's see if they can turn two. Nope. Burke pulled off the second base bag, but Ryan runs very well, and I don't think Burke was going to have a chance even if the throw had been online. Yeah, there, there was just no double play in the offing on that one. And, you know, unless you got somebody like Vanny Trio second, and the feed is perfect. Skip Schumacher, one for three on the afternoon, has walked a couple of times, has scored three of those Memphis 11 runs. Runners at the corners and two out. 11 to six, Memphis lead. Out to Burke, and for the force, that ends the ninth. They got a couple of base hits, they leave two stranded. We head to the bottom of the ninth, the last chance for Round Rock trailing 11 to six. Welcome back to the Dell Diamond. Mike Caps, Larry Durker alongside. As you're taking a look at the rock climbing wall out in front Centerville. I don't think I'm going to do that, Larry. I've been invited a couple of times. I just don't uh, see much future in that. <laughs> a lot well, of kids do. A lot of kids get out yeah, there. And I would over. imagine. I'm sure they have safety ropes. Andy Cavazos, Clute, Texas native, making his 21st appearance is one and two. Very nice 3.74 ERA. League hits him at 265. Andy Cavazos from Clute. Cavazos one of two or three in their bullpen that wears the flat bill of the cap. As you can see there as he gets loose for his 21st PCL appearance. This is one thing a lot of scouts look for is that flat cap. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have a reason why to do that. I, <laughs> I don't do. always have a reason. Okay. <laughs> Sometime we'll have to get into uh, your playing day stories. Those are always. Well, we've got a few more games. 
of Thrill. Kevin Davidson to pinch hit. Came up from Corpus when Danny Ardois went down with a leg injury. Right-handed batter Davidson has caught one game for the train since coming from Corpus. Young man had some pretty good years in A-ball. Had seven homers at Salem a few years back. Stocky young man at 5'8", and about 185. The catcher? Yes, sir. Well, there's a there's a future. It's right out there for you if you're in the Astros organization and you are a catcher because Brad Ostras isn't going to last too much longer. That's right, and there are some coming, we're told. Interesting the way some baseball people have begun to take middle infielders who are a little bit bigger than average and turn them into catchers. You've seen that happen some. You, know, you look for a guy with good hands and a, a quick release and a strong arm. And then I guess the next most important factor there is his willingness. That's for sure. That takes a special person to want to go back there and okay. uh, suffer through the hot games with all the gear and right. Getting run into and taking foul balls off your hand and got to be tough. Now the bright sunshine back out as Davidson shoots what that one down the right field side. Larry, next game for you and I here at the Dell Diamond will be on June the 11th against New Orleans. And then you'll have games with the Corpus Christi Hooks, Ryan Sanders baseball game of the week, June the 21st and 24th. A tape delay Texas League All-Star game. It'll be on the 27th. Yeah, and the game on the on the uh, 15th too, I think, in Corpus. I'm not sure. And you'll have one a week before that with us on July the 8th. But the next one is June the 11th against New Orleans. And we'll walk right back off the longest road trip of the season and into the Dell Diamond for four quick games and the first on television. Looking forward to that one. It has been a great day at the park. Bright sunshine now on Memorial Day. And Larry, I've really had a good time working with you here. Yeah. Outside of the uh, results of the game, it's been great. Yeah. But that's always been a part of this sport. The best teams typically win about 60% of their games, so there's going to be a lot of losses no matter how good you are. There we go. Uh, May the 29th through June 1st at Fresno. Sacramento to open, basically open June for four, and then a day off Oklahoma City for four. Don't get many days off in this league, do no, you? No, sir. No, sir. We'll run a streak of 20 to 30 games in a row without a day off sometime. But as Tim Raines Jr. looks at the strike, it's part of the preparation to get these kids ready to go to Houston. And sit and watch. <laughs> Play every day for your whole minor league career and then go to the big leagues and sit on the bench and watch. Well. Not, not all the time. Most of the guys that get called up have the kind of talent that they would prefer to see him continue to hone that talent in the minor leagues rather than sit in the major leagues. That's, that's why Chris Burke is here. Reigns just got into one. Backing up the outfielder to the warning track and Stavanoa will put it away for the out. Two gone in the ninth. Last chance, Chris Burke's two for four. Burke up for the fifth time. Cavazos drills that one for a strike. And the second one. And who could forget that magic moment for Burke in the 18th inning against the Braves? Yeah, you know, the ups and downs of a baseball career. One year you're hitting a game-winning home run in the playoffs, and the next year you're in the minor leagues, although this is two years later from that. But Chris struggled with a bat earlier this year, too, mm -hmm. in Houston. Mm -hmm. 
Burke with these two hits today has upped his average to 216. Ricochet shot off the glove. They'll never get Burke. And he'll beat it out for his third hit. And you would think he was really lacing the ball this afternoon, but the last hit was a little bloop over the infield, and that one was an infield hit. Watch again. We see this happen a lot in the Pacific Coast League. Pitchers are so aggressive. And Cavazos didn't do himself any favor there. But again, that's a difficult play. It may shoot up the middle otherwise. It might. The shortstop might have been able to make it the play on it, but when you're pitching and the ball's coming back to you, your instinct is to try to catch it. Sure. Brutland one for four. And a Cavasso strike. Boy, this is sunburn kind of weather. You get started with this big time sunshine. Clouds come out. Sun comes back. <laughs> if you're very light skin, you can get burned on a day like this. One and one to Brundlett. We'll go twice to the western reaches of the PCO this year. We're on our first trip beginning tomorrow to Fresno and Sacramento and then back to Oklahoma City. We'll be to Tucson and Las Vegas out in July. Be nice and warm in those cities in July. <laughs> yes, sir. Two and two to Brundtland. The Las Vegas ballpark is interesting. It's almost as if a ballpark broke out of a convention center. <laughs> it's really a, a, an extension of the convention center, but you've got those mountains in the background. It's a beautiful setting. That one's lifted into center field to Ankeel, should end the ball game, and it does. And Round Rock falls to Memphis 11 to 6. We'll be back uh, in just a moment. 11 to 6, Round Rock loses. Back in a moment. The Ryan Sanders Baseball Game of the Week is brought to you by Sitgo. There at every turn. Carino's Italian Grill. It's not your garden variety Italian. Corpus Christi Convention and Visitors Bureau, the National Beach of Texas. Round Rock Convention and Visitors Bureau, the sports capital of Texas. Nolan Ryan's guaranteed tender beef, always tender every bite, every time. Snowandwater.com, name brands at discount prices. IBC Bank, we do more so you can do more. And MD Anderson Cancer Center, making cancer history. Back at the Dell Diamond, Mike Caps and Larry Durker alongside. Larry, the story of this ballgame to me was the fifth and the sixth inning, the three-run home run and the grand slam by Nick Stavanoa. Rick Ankiel showing some people in baseball that he has successfully made the transition well, from the mound to the outfield. Yeah, the RBI double first time up and then two home runs the next two times up, a walk in front of a grand slam the fourth time up. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to survive a three-run inning followed by a, a four-run inning and uh, Round Rock just could never get quite back into the ballgame. Never ball game. did get it back. Eight home runs struck in the ballgame. They hit five. Round Rock hit three. Uh, the ones, Round Rock, the last two back to back. But, boy, just a case of too little too late. Yeah, and it, it usually is when you get that far behind. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in A ball or if you're in AAA or the major leagues. Uh, it's hard to overcome that kind of deficit. Well, I enjoyed working with you today and looking forward to June the yeah. 11th. We'll yeah. be back here after our longest road trip of the season. Larry Durker and Mike Caps, 11 to 6, Memphis at the Dell Diamond. Great Memorial Day. <laughs>